marijuana can cause paranoia. How much pot do you smoke? Huh? Do you cheat on? No. Are guys climbing through the window? No. I know for a fact that you cheated on me with my neighbors. He's just talking to them. Through the walls. Y yeah, I can hear him. He'll put like little sticks under the tires of the car. He's like, the stick was like this, and now it's like this. Your neighbor Mike is here. He's gonna come through this window right here. I've never seen a dude act like that before. Danny, you gotta realize you got the problem. No, I don't have the yes, problem. Yes, you do. Let's get to the results. Yeah. You were with him and pregnant when he made this thing. Yeah. Naked chicks. You want a cookie? You oh, want a cookie? Wow. See that jumper? The, there's more. I put this girl out there to make the money. She's a prostitute, people. Were you prostituting? No, I wasn't. So who's lying here? I'm going to prove that it's his child. And you said you're hoping you're not the father. Oh, God, I hope not. Took a DNA test. We're going to find out. You want to get smashed? Security. My guest Danny says he can't trust his girlfriend. He's even gone to the extremes of setting booby traps to try and catch her cheating. And there's more. The man he thinks she's cheating with is their neighbor. Take a look. I'm here today because uh, my boyfriend thinks that I've been cheating on him. He sets up booby traps for me um, because he thinks I'm sneaking out in the middle of the night. He'll put like little sticks under the tires of the car just to see if it was moved. And he says, they're not in the same spot. The car was moved. And I never touched the car. He'll put our car keys in a certain way. Um, that way he'll know if they're moved or not. He's written down the mileage in the car. When I text my friends, he thinks that I have uh, secret names for the guys that I'm texting. Most nights I won't be able to sleep because he keeps me up all night long, uh, accusing me of talking to people through the walls. He thinks that my neighbor and I are messing around. Um, he thinks that the neighbor will sneak over in the middle of the night or he'll think that I message him on my cell phone. He's so obsessed with thinking that I'm cheating that he's driving himself crazy. He's been my one and only and I've never done anything to him for him to think that I'm cheating on him. I'm stressed out all the time. I feel like I've done everything I could possibly do for him and, and prove to him that I love him. It just hurts that the person that I love the most is accusing me of cheating on him. I've proved to him hundreds of times that I've been faithful, that I love him, um, and it's just never, never good enough for him. Two and a half years is a long time to think that somebody's cheating on you. Yeah. Why are you still with her? Well, because I, I love her. You know, yeah, it's like when I'm away you know, from her, I can't, I can't be like away from her you know it's, it's hard on me so now do you put like in a in the tape uh you put a little stick behind her tire do you do things like yeah, that? yeah yeah i've done stuff like that i feel like she has honestly cheated on me and i'm gonna be the one that gets hurt at the end of this not her when you watch that tape and she's already hurt right she's hurt already that you're accusing her of this because she says you not only haven't i cheated you're the one and only for her well, I just, I just don't believe it, because a while ago, uh, I had a buddy living with me, you know, he was like, <laughs> I came home, I seen a shirt on my floor, and, I'm, and I asked him, but I was like, do, you know, you guys doing something behind my back? And she, you know, they both said no. A day later, I go back in, in my room, and I, there's a green shirt, and imprinted on it says, you bet your sweet ass. So I was like, you know what I mean? I just put two and two together. It's like, I've never had caught in it her doing it but i the shirt says you bet your sweet ass yeah there's no shirt in my room and then all of a sudden another one of his shirts so you think somebody was sending you a message like you bet your sweet ass i'm sleeping with your girlfriend right did you ask him if he put the shirt there yeah he, he don't know how it got there again and you think she's cheating now right yeah with who with mike my my neighbor why do you think that because it will be late at night, you know, I'll hear him, I'll, like he'll, he'll type, type me on Facebook and then he'll just, won't talk to me for 15 minutes and I'll hear him outside and, you know, she's in the back, so she's talking to somebody and I hear him all the time. I mean, he, But she's in the here. house and he's outside. Huh? <laughs> no, he said, he's in the house. I'll, 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 yeah, my, my walls on my my walls on my house are thin. You know what I mean? The, you can hear, and it, it's so quiet I'm saying, out though, there. But so. your 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 girlfriend's in the house, and he's outside. Yeah. Well, no matter how thin those walls are, they can't be having sex, right? 
Well, he come no, he comes through the window when I'm when he comes through the window. Yes, I honestly believe. But if that you're coming through the window and those walls are real thin, wouldn't the whole wall just collapse? Well, it's not that thin. Have you seen this guy crawling through your window? I've heard it. Well, I've heard noises. You know what I mean. And now you're at the point you don't even let Missy cook for you, right? Yeah, and I, I don't trust her anymore. No. Why don't you let her cook for you? Because I think she's doing stuff to it. You know, she's spitting in it. Because I had a drink. I had a drink on my counter. I just took a sip of it. I put it back down. I go to the bathroom. I come back. I take a sip off it and like slime down in my throat. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Okay, if you're at the point where you don't trust your girlfriend, you think she's spitting in your food, you know, people are crawling through your windows. Why stay with somebody like that? Because. Because I know once I do break up with her and leave her, yeah, it'll be all right for a few days, and then I'm gonna be all sad and depressed, and not want to do nothing, and stay inside, and not do nothing. You know what I mean? Um, I'm gonna ask you a question. I want you to ask honestly, right? How much pot do you smoke? I don't know. It smells like a bowl. It's a bowl of eggs. Hold on, hold on. How how much do you smoke? Just like a bowl once in a while. A bowl? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you. Marijuana can cause paranoia. Yeah. No, nah, man, I'm paranoid, and it's not, it's not the weed. You're not paranoid. Well, no, I am a little paranoid <laughs> about things, but it's not the weed doing it. Right. So now let me ask you another question. Do you cheat on your girlfriend? I, I cheated on her one time. That's just, it. Just once. Just one time. Because I suspected her of cheating on me because of the way she was treating me, you know? Do you cheat on me? No. Are guys climbing through the window? No. I know for a fact that you cheated on me with my neighbors. He's talking to them through the walls. Y yeah, I can hear him. Your neighbor Mike is here. He's going to come through this window right here. Do you cheat on me? No. Are guys climbing through the window? No. I know for a fact that you cheated on me with my neighbors. Listen, it sounds like a crazy story, okay? And I think if you cut back on the marijuana use, you might not be so paranoid. Because little tree limbs behind a, a tire, you know, set keys a certain way. If you have to live that way, it's if it gets it. to that point, it's not worth it, man. No, I hear you. Um, now, she took a lie detector test, and obviously she passes. Will that cure some of this paranoia? That would help. Yeah, that would help. And if she fails, what would you do? What would I do? Yeah. I'd probably be really pissed off. Well, yeah, I know you'd be pissed off, but... Would you finally break up with her? Yes, definitely, 100%. And then maybe go back and put some uh, insulation and some drywall over your walls. All right. Let's bring out Missy. I'm sick and tired. Whatever, I know I'm for a fact that, that you cheated on me. And Where's the proof? Where's the proof? Where is it, Danny? We're going to have proof as soon as You're stuff right, goes down, You're right, we're going to have right? proof. Because I know that, that you, that you you're are with, wrong. You're with one of my best friends. N now you're with my neighbors. You, have you caught me going out in the middle of the house? Have I not yes, been by your side Missy, the whole time? Yes, Missy, people were right outside trying to pick you up in the middle of the night. And who was there? He, Mike. Did and he, he's the only one that was alone, right? Diddy, he, Mike sat there and told you that he was getting no. picked up by his friends. He's your friend. He's not my friend. Let me, let me take over from here. Do you cheat on him? No. Do you spit in his food? No. Are guys climbing through the window? No. Do you engage in sex on the living room floor with other men besides your no. boyfriend? No. Did you put the t-shirt in the bedroom that said, what did it say? You bet your sweet no. ass. No. You love him? I do. And it's got to be tough being constantly accused of cheating. Mm -hmm. How did you notice that he was putting twigs behind your car tire? Because he would come up to me, he's like, why is the stick move? <laughs> Like this, and now it's like this. I'm 
like, well, I didn't touch the stick. The keys were like this, and now they're like this. I didn't even know where the keys were. You ever have sex with a neighbor? Never. Never? Ever fantasize about them? No. Okay. You were the one telling me when he um, moved in, oh, he's cute. Yeah, when he I, came in, I, I, I said, said, oh, he's, he's ugly, he's I, this, I he's that. I don't just think I ever said that he's cute. Him. It doesn't well, matter. I honestly don't think I ever said he's cute. I said, he's a nice guy. I think a couple should say, oh, he's cute, they're cute. You make games he, like... You're right, because he tells me every day how everybody oh, else oh, yeah, the world better Oh, yeah, that's the man right there. Me. That's the man's uh, body style I want right there. That's the same guy right there. Oh, he's cute. That's what you're saying, okay. and then you're acting um, like... You're not spitting in his food, right? No. that's pretty disgusting. That is disgusting. And he'll make me... she is. I won't even eat anything. He'll make me eat the food. Would make me try it before he'll even try it just to ensure that I'm not doing it. Okay, so she's eating. <laughs> oh and then he God, says, oh, it does, doesn't yeah, matter that you eat your own anymore. spit. So if she, so right. if she eats her the food that you want her to taste, and I, that, are you okay with it then? Well, she eats at least half of it, I am. Your neighbor Mike is here. Let's see. <laughs> he's going he's to come through this window right here. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. What, Mike? What, are you trying to say something to me, man? Yeah, I'm sick and tired of you saying that I'm cheating. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm straight f***ing up right here, man. man. No, 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 I'm even no, kidding, no. man. I'm f***ing well, you. Don't you know what you're saying that, man. Don't swear. Don't swear. You're supposed yeah, to be my okay, boy. I go over there, puff lunch with you. This is how you Stop act, man. Yeah. No. You're getting into more than weed, man. Something. Yeah, all right. He's talking to him. Through the walls. Yeah, I can hear a man's voice compared to a girl's voice. I've never seen a dude act like that before. Danny, you got to realize you got the problem. No, I don't have the yes, problem. Yes, you do. Let's get to the results. Yeah. He's talking to him you know I mean? through the walls. Yeah, yeah, I can hear a man's voice compared to a girl's voice. So I got to ask you, Mike. Uh, yeah. Do you climb through the window? No, I don't climb through the window. I stay in my house and... He's on the computer all, all the you're time trying to get me. at just me. Come over when you need I don't something. talk to him, you know what I mean? I don't need to talk to him every so two seconds. So you're not seconds. sleeping with his no, girlfriend? No, I'm not sleeping with his girl. You're no. not creeping He's in. supposed to be my friend, you know what I mean? But he acts all crazy. <laughs> like I'm sleeping with uh, her. Why do you think sleep. he acts this crazy? I have no idea. Could really. it be the pot? Uh, I think it's something else. But I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's cheating on her. Maybe he... I don't know. You know what I mean? That's usually, I don't know. Yeah. I don't Do you know. think he's cheating on I've you? never seen a dude act like that before. No. You don't think he's... I was heartbroken when he did the first time. And, so, and she's always crying. And because that caused you so much pain, you don't think he would do that again? Um, I like Missy as a friend. She's cool. You know what I mean? But I can't even really talk to her because like Danny thinks I'm... You know what I mean? Dude, it, there's been th there's been like three different times I've heard his voice outside of my house. You know, and I'm she's, not stupid, And man. she's in the house talking to him. You know what I mean? Through the walls. Yeah, yeah, I can hear a man's voice compared to a girl's voice. You know what I mean? I, mean, I can hear her whispering, and I know her voice in a whisper. You know what I mean? He was just texting her the other day. I was giving neighbors. him a ride somewhere. It doesn't matter. I, 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 I wasn't texting her. No. I wasn't texting her. I was not texting her, no. I texting I her Steve. Listen, even if you did... She's your neighbor. He's your buddy. Yeah, you I thought, you that. know, I, I like the kid. That's he's a good code, kid, right? That's the just, guy code, yeah, right? I wouldn't do that, you know I'm what I mean? I'm just embarrassed. You'll, you'll find out something. He's making himself test. look like he's crazy, and, and I don't want to now, do what, that to no, him. No, he no, no listen. You, I didn't want to make him look like he was crazy. Who called the show? Me. Okay. You called the show because you're tired of this, right? I am. I can't And you And you're willing to take a lie detector test to prove to him that you're not doing this. Yeah. And if you pass and he doesn't change... I can't live like it. I can't. I'm going to be starting school. I want to make something on myself. And for me staying home... Yeah. Me staying home with him and, and you might, being worried. You know what? You might have to put your foot down about the pot usage. Yeah. You might have to say, if you want to be with me, you got to stop smoking pot because he did. it's making he, you too paranoid. And, and that's the thing is I, I know he, he loves me because he's... He's done a lot to change. Like, he used to drink every day. He stopped drinking for me. He, he got a job, and he, you know, doing what he could do and to prove to me he, he loved me. Let's get to the results. Yeah. <laughs> no luck. You know what I mean? I love you. No. I'm the one who's not getting Missy took here. a lie detector test, 
And she was asked, are you currently cheating on Danny? She answered, no. Have you ever had sexual contact with Mike? She answered, no. Have you ever had sexual contact with another man while in a relationship with Danny? She said, no. Have you ever tampered with Danny's food or drink? She answered, no. And the results for your lie detector test, and they're all the same. They came back all the same way. We all know. I told the truth. <laughs> you told the truth. Yeah. Then how, then how, how can you explain, can you explain why you're showing up? Dang, all this happened. Things just happened like that. Told you you put me through hell and you're worried about something. I'm moving out of that place because it's haunted to Everywhere. Oh. Because Dan, you got I don't care. You've got the problem. No, I don't have the yes, problem. Yes, you do. And I tell you, one time, one more accused of, of saying that I'm a cheater, calling me names. I am so done. I don't even believe you, and I still don't believe it. I still don't believe it. I know okay. it's true. It's not okay. true. Okay. But I don't believe it. Um, well, I know it's true, man. It's just that she lies about you anything. Say to Mike? Mike, I just want to say sorry. Yeah. If yeah. Legit, yeah. then... Yeah. I don't get it. No. She I don't get it. She passed. I Hold on. Stop. You, you, oh, Mike, I'm sorry. Her, you're like, no, I don't believe it. And what about this and that? It's just been so much lies and so much you know stuff what? I've learned. You're going to end up hurt and depressed like you said you're going to be. That's what's going to happen I already here. am, so it doesn't well, matter. Her, okay, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Beat so you know what I would say? I would say he's saying I'm, it doesn't matter. Basically, his reaction is you took the lie detector twice, right? Yeah. So basically, she took the lie detector twice. She passed both times. And basically, he's saying, I don't care. No, that's I don't care. No, I, you don't. I, no, you don't. Because that's not the reaction of somebody who cares. And you can say whatever you want. You need to stop <laughs> smoking so much pop because it's screwing up your head. Oh, oh I didn't even know that. Here's a, a surprise. You no, took a lie detector no. twice. <laughs> Do you want me to read his results? Yeah. Yeah. Other than the one female Missy already knows about, have you ever had sexual intercourse with other women during your relationship with Missy? The answer, no. Results for that question is, you were with him and pregnant when he made this tape. Yeah, naked chicks. I'm gonna prove that it's his child. And you said you're hoping you're not the father. Oh, God, I hope not. Took a DNA test, we're gonna find out. Have you ever had sexual intercourse with other women during your relationship with Missy? The answer, no. Results for that question is... Are you currently cheating on Missy? He answered, no. Results for that question is... He told the truth. <laughs> other than the one female Missy already knows about, have you ever had sexual intercourse with other women during your relationship with Missy? He answered no. He did not tell the truth. I didn't cheat on you, so I don't care what that paper says because it's not true. Um, have you ever tampered with Missy's food or drink? No. You answered no and you told the truth. Um, I don't know if you heard, we asked him if he ever tampered with your food and drink. Who did you cheat on me with, Missy, did he? I did it. I, there's nobody oh. else to even let know. Me, let me finish. Okay. Oh, I can't believe it. I won't live in a state. I've only been in a state, but we only have like he this many people in there, man. He didn't tamper with your food or drink. And then Dan Rebikoff, who administers our lie detector test, his, sto uh, his notes for this test are, subject kept stating that he was nervous during the test. This is the common excuse for failing. Subject continued to leak deception as he asked if he passed the test on several occasions. He then stated twice, I should pass as I'm pretty sure I told the truth. All right, you're going to ask someone who's paranoid, supposedly, if they're nervous. So, you know what I mean? I have anxiety, that he had And you're trying to ask me if I'm nervous. Like, well, but even nervousness sorry. or anxiety would not influence your test results. All right, whatever. So who was it, that same girl? The only person I can think about that it even was, was 
back in the day when we first got together, before anything even solid happened with us, that was okay. pretty much it. Uh, you know what? The truth of it is, who cares? I mean, I know well, you care because it. this is your relationship, but the thing is, you came here, you passed the test, <laughs> This guy doesn't pass what about being honest about cheating on you. He's putting, you know, the neighbors through hell. He's putting you through hell. When do you finally say, you know what, enough's enough. Until you change, you can't be with me. You, you have destroyed my life. You've destroyed my life. How? You freaking sucked every last penny right out of me, hey, bro. You I want hey, oh hey, Pot my God, get off my stage! <laughs> um, now, I, I like you, Missy. I really do, and I think you've suffered enough. So here's the deal. We're going to play pick a door here. Out that door is Mr. Pothead. Who, who not only doesn't care that you passed the lie detector test, oh. <laughs> that puts you through hell for two years, but he can't pass his own damn lie detector test. All right? And out this door is the Steve Wilco show, me and my staff. We're going to help you get yourself back on your feet. If you want to say, hey, you know what? I deserve better for myself, and I think there's a guy out that door that's going to treat me a lot better. Yes. Go out that yeah, door. So... The show's over. We're all curious. What are you going to do with your life? The, the reason why I came on the show was to And we gave to it him. to you. And we gave it to you. Yeah. yeah. And now, what are you going to do with that? And then I, I feel as though, I, and I'm being honest, that I, I, I want to see if he'll change. Then go out that door. I just want to say I'm sorry for everything, and I'm sorry for Who putting you through all this. Why did you tell me? I'm sorry for smoking all the pot, and I'm sorry for all everything. No, why didn't done. you tell me? Missy, uh, Missy, when? it was so long ago. The beginning of our relationship. That don't even matter anymore. And you're going to tell four me years now. Ago you're going to tell four years ago. And, and if I would have done it you four years ago, well, you would have done what? She walked out the door to be with you. What are you going to do with it? Well, probably she start to, to treat her right and do the right thing. Stop smoking. Stop dr Well, I never drink anyway, but stop it and try to move you on know, and have a good say, life. I'm watching this, and who knows? Maybe he'll change. You want to see if he's going to change. There's nothing wrong with that. You've got a lot of time invested in the guy. But if you go back and if and if he's still acting, I promise you. I, I promise you. I will leave. I promise you. Okay. I promise. I hope so. I good promise. Luck. You were with him and pregnant when he made this tape. Yeah. Naked chicks. And you said you're hoping you're not the father. Oh, God, I hope not. You want to get smacked? Security. And you said you're hoping you're not the father. Oh, God, I hope not. You want to get smacked? Security. Tiffany, why are you here? I'm here today to prove to my ex, who's nothing but a lying, cheating little bum, that he's the father of my son, and he needs to step up and do what he has to do, or he can go on somewhere, because I'm done with it. He doesn't believe that uh, your child is his. Uh, does he think you were cheating on him, or...? Uh, according to him, he thinks I was prostituting. But he's the one that left me when I was six months pregnant to go live with his ex-girlfriend in another state. Why does he think you were prostituting? I don't know. He makes up stuff in his head. Like, he lives in a different world than everybody else. He's um, not right. Were you prostituting? No, I wasn't. Okay. Never been arrested for it? No. Okay. I've never been arrested in my life, let alone prostitution. Have you ever prostituted? No, I haven't. All right, so you have the baby, and, you're in, and you tell him you're pregnant. Uh, five months go by, now you're five months pregnant. Things are wonderful? Yeah. He's happy, you're happy? Mm hmm And then six months he goes... I got a chick that's not pregnant. No, he said that he had nowhere to live, so he decided he would move four states away was from he me to with live you? with his ex. Yes, but I couldn't have him living where I was living. Okay, so he said, well, I don't got a place to live. I'm going to go live with the next four, four states, states away. away from me with his ex-girlfriend and try to convince me they weren't doing anything because I'm just that stupid, right? No. How did you find out he was cheating on you? 
I looked at his Facebook and it said, check out my YouTube videos. He told the whole world, check out his videos. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to look at your videos. Get on there. It's videos of naked chicks. Like, are you that stupid, really? With him with naked with chicks? Him? Yes, he's rubbing all over them, talking to them. They're and naked you, in his you house provided sleeping. provided us uh, a copy of the tape. Oh, yeah. Well, well, let's take a look. Go ahead. That, that thing over there, that little thing sleeping on that couch right there. Christy, just passed the f- up. That's right. Now let me go back here. You got this. Yeah. Cool. She all right. So yeah, that's my life. That's how it goes. But it's a real boss. I'll have me. Yeah. This goes on on a 24/7 daily basis. Mm-hmm. It's a real pimp. Pimp? No, you're not. You were with him and pregnant when he made this tape. Yeah, he was in a different state. We were supposed I mean, to be together. I was he six just, months he pregnant. He just rubbed her butt a little bit. No, no, no. I don't care what he did. If I'm with you and I'm pregnant by you, you shouldn't even be touching another female, thinking about touching nothing. How old is your child now? He's, he will be three months, and he ain't seen him not one damn time. Ain't even bought him a pack of Pampers. And um, we took a DNA test. Yeah, isn't he beautiful? He yeah, is a I beautiful know. little boy. Thank you. Um, and so he's he's never held him, never seen him. Nope. Never bought him anything. Nope. He'd rather call me and accuse me of doing stuff with other guys than call me and say, hey, how's my son doing? Do you still love this guy? Yeah, I still love him. Would you, if he came on here and said... I'm dumping the other girl to be with you. Would you take him back? Oh, no. He's a bump. No. He's I got kids to raise. I can't be raising another one. You ain't got no job. You ain't got nowhere to live. You don't do nothing with your life. You sit around and get drunk all day long. You're disrespectful. You cheated on me and everything. Of course I love him. I gave him a child. Of course I love him. But am I going to be with you? No. Am I in love with you? No. I did love you, but I'm not going to be with you. So what are you hoping happens today? Today, I'm going to prove that it's his child, and he can either step up and do what he has to do, or he can just sign his rights over, and I'll leave him alone, because I don't want nothing to do with him, but he can either have something to do with my son, or he can go on somewhere. It's done. It's, right. I'm Let's up. bring out your former boyfriend, oh, Nick. Oh, really? Hey, Miss Piggy, shut up. Excuse Listen me? To me. Shut up. Right, shut up. right. This I'm girl, what? I put I'm Miss Piggy. Hold up. I'm Miss Piggy, but you were calling me last I'm night, talking. right? Shut up. Want me to come chill with you? Shut up. You ain't a man. Listen. You ain't got no Hold job. On. You don't Stop. take you care of your kids. You ain't got no job. You ain't got no your Hold kid, dude, get out Stop. of here. Stop. You gave me every single dime you hey, ever Nick, made. Nick, I put you out there Nick. to make the money. What are you, you talking a bum. about? Nick. Nick. Oh, because I'm a bum. Nick. So I thought you were a prostitute, though. Nick. I'm not a prostitute. Stop. Stop for one second. Come on. Nick. Man. Yeah. Listen, I mean, you know. Hi, Steve. How's How you doing? doing? <laughs> um, put my videos this on there. P- are you serious for real, yeah, dog? Yeah, I'm serious. Nick. What were you doing while I was pregnant? for two seconds, okay? She could possibly be the mother of your child, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I know you have some thoughts, but you took a DNA test, and we're going to find out. But you're calling her names, insulting her. She calls me a bum. I mean, yeah. Because you ain't got no saying, job, and you don't take care of your kid. Saying. That's what a bum is. Did you have sexual intercourse with anyone besides Nick around the time you got pregnant with your son? You answered no, and the results are... Did you have sexual intercourse with anyone besides Nick around the time you got pregnant with your son? You answered no, and the results are... I I would assume that if this child is yours that you'd want to be... Oh, I'm going to be there. You'd want to be a dad. Yeah, yeah, I'm taking custody of my son. I I just say, I can look at you, and I'm not saying this in a mean way, but you're immature. You know what I mean? You're 21 years old, and... So I guess what I'm saying is, is a child enough to motivate you to become, you know, act more like a man? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it will. Yeah. It will. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Why do you say that she was prostituting? Are you serious? I put her out there to do it. I was the one saying yeah, you Stop, 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 stop. Why would you do that? I'm a bum. I needed money. 
Okay. <laughs> right? You know what? If it's true, and I don't right. know if I believe it so much, okay. and I gotta be honest, but if you did and you're being serious, then I gotta say, you know, that's probably one of the worst, no, you know, it's up there. It's in the top five worst oh, things you yeah. could do to a female. Oh, you know yeah, what I you're mean? right about that. Yeah, okay. you're right. I understand. So did yeah. you really do that? Yeah. I'm not lying to you. No. I'm not lying to you. Why man. would you put a woman in that position? I don't know. You're right about that. I, I it's, have no it, clue. You know what? It's disgusting. It's not funny. Um, no, it's not. Because I'll say this. When I was a Chicago policeman and I saw all these women work in the streets, their lives are, are destroyed. They become shells of what they were. Yeah. They get raped, beaten, robbed. Um, they lose every sense of who they are. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. You like, understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Have you ever seen that in a woman? No. Okay, then you don't understand what I'm saying. Because only but, you could understand if you saw that, if you looked in these eyes and you said, you know, I wonder what their parents are thinking right now. Are they looking for their child? Their, their little girl that's destroyed now that will go with anybody for any amount of money. If you understood that, you would never send a woman out there. She was doing it before I ever, ever met her. She says, she was doing it she's saying she I never did it. it, so who's lying here? T you, you, who dropped you off to, when you first met me? Who's Just because I go with somebody doesn't mean I'm prostituting. Yeah. All right. What do you mean go with somebody? Yeah. I go out to eat with, with somebody and I'm prostituting. And then there's a text. Do you eat a meal and then have sex with them? No. Okay. They have sex with them, period. Who dropped you off to meet somebody me? Somebody had who to feed you me because you first... sure enough hey. isn't. Hey. Right, don't who? swear. I'm sorry. See? Listen, you know, I hear two people, you know, you're pretty insulting and you're very insulting, but who, who who's going to be the role model here for your yeah. child? Yeah. I am, because I'm the one raising him. But you ain't doing you know nothing what? but stealing liquor forget. with your girlfriend from Walmart. Why don't you just concentrate on being a good mother? Yeah. I am Instead a good mother. Hold on, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Hold on, hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. There's more. Wait, there's more. What happened when, um, pay, pay this for your son, pay this? What about child support? How come you didn't show up to your child support? I told you I didn't have a way to get there. You didn't have a way to get there. And you, you told went to me show with your you wasn't going to get me the DNA there. anyways. You told me you she wasn't going to give me the DNA case, anyways. She and I would have got it case. done when he was you first born if he was here. Yeah, I love her. If, you do love her. Not like, I'm not in love with her. I want to be with her ever again. You know what I'm saying? We spend time together. But you don't want to be with me, but you invited me to your hotel last night, right? Did I? Yeah, oh, you did? Prove it. Prove it. I got the, okay, can we bring my cell phone out here? Because I got the. I've been her best friend since I was eight. What do you know? You don't know. No, come on. Who is she? Who is she? That's baby daddy right there. Who is she? That's baby daddy right there. Who is she? That's baby daddy. That's baby daddy. Like, don't nobody want to look at you either. Don't nobody want to look at you either. Steve, the stuff he doesn't buy. Don't nobody even want you. She buys. Up. Oh, please, please. Listen, listen, please. Listen. Be quiet. Everybody stop. Dude, listen. I can't even talk. Please, Nick. <laughs> Nick, I'm asking you. Please be I'm quiet. Just, please good. be quiet. Do you have anything that you want to add? The reason I'm here is because the whole time she was pregnant, when you left her to go stay in Michigan with your little girlfriend, your little ex-girlfriend, I took care of her. I took her to her doctor's appointments. I bought her stuff for her baby. I fed her. I paid the, I paid the bills that's in the house that she lived in. Now, you weren't having sex, were you? No. Okay. No, I just took care of her and everything about her, her doctor's appointments, everything. You guys are good friends. Yeah, I've been friends since care I was eight it. years old. So, what do, you, what do you think? Like, he's wrong for denying the baby? He, he's a lame. Like, what are you doing in life? What are you doing? You're a stripper. I'm what, a stripper. What? The f what? Oh, yeah. I'm a what? Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. just a stripper. Guess what? I make more one night than you. I make more one night than you do a whole night. Surprise. I want to really? thank you for helping your friend out through her pregnancy, yeah. helping her out. That's just great being a friend. You can have a seat. Okay, thank you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Yeah. Yeah. On my YouTube videos on oh, TV. Yeah. You Tiffany, you know. came here and you took a lie detector. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what we asked you, but we're about to find out. You asked me if I was a prostitute. I guessed about prostitute. Um, while in a relationship with Nick, did you ever prostitute? You answered no. Um, you did not tell the truth. <laughs> Ballin' bro! I told you, bro! You want a cookie? You Ballin' bro! Security. You better back up. Oh, you see that jumper?
And you said you're hoping you're not the father. Yeah, I hope not. All right. God, I pray not. If you need private, discreet DNA paternity testing, call DNA Diagnostic Center at 1-877-DNA-CENTER. Okay, so will you admit that you did prostitute? Oh, now we Sure, right? whatever. Ah! <laughs> sure, whatever. Sorry. But I was um, lying, guys. Hold on. Sorry. If you have a little son, is this the way you want to act? Pull up the no. picture. Okay. He looks different. No. All right. Pull up the picture. But if you were a prostitute, it could be anybody, yeah, right? Yeah, like... I, don't, I mean, you failed. Not when I got pregnant and it wasn't even prostitute. Here you go. Did you have sexual intercourse with anyone besides Nick around the time you got pregnant with your son? You answered no. And the results are you did not tell the truth. Oh! Wow. We're done. Oh, no, we don't talk. So, to and it was the one a cookie. Balling. It was. It was. The one a cookie. I don't care who. I'm now, I'm gonna take a show. Hold on, hold on. A show of hands. Does anybody care? No. no. I don't. I did. Because to me, this just seems like two knuckleheads that got together. That they really don't care who they sleep with. They don't think about the consequences of what happens when you have sex. And then you act like a total moron to each other after the baby's born. Please, God. But this one matters. This, this is the only thing that matters. Because the little boy involved in this story, I mean, he's... Look at him. He looks just you know, like the, you. Are you... Look at it. You know what the shame of it is? How old is he? He's three months. He's three months old and he's already a victim. Oh, no. Yeah. He's a victim. Yeah. And you said you're hoping you're not the father. Oh, God, I hope not. All right. God, I pray not. Well, you got something to look forward to on Father's Day. You are the father. Thank you. Give me my money. Me, give me my me, money. Bro. You need to give me my money. You need to give me my and step up or sign your rights you, over. Buddy. Be a man, okay? Step up, get a job. It don't matter Chewbacca, what I did. I take up. care of your son. You ain't did. But the sad thing is, there's a little boy, and I don't, I don't think either one of you, and prove me wrong, I hope, mm -hmm. but I don't think either one of you are going to grow up and be a good uh, parent to this child. That's my fourth. I got three others. Where are they? Where are they? Huh? They're not with you. Um, no, I, not am with you. Not I am you. a good mom. I am a good mom. They're not with you. Again, Prove me wrong, or not with her. but I, I would love to update this story okay. only for your little boy. I'd like to Go have ahead. him on stage in a few years, talk to him, but the two of you, I just don't care. All That's right. fine. Goodbye, both of you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, brother. Oh, Holy God, you see that? Yeah! Melissa became so enraged with her two-year-old daughter that she held her under a shower of scalding hot water <laughs> while the child screamed in pain. This happened just two weeks ago. But Melissa admits that she has been physically abusing her daughter since she was only two months old. <laughs> and now Melissa says she wants to stop before she seriously hurts her baby. All this and more on today's Steve Wilco Show. I would hit her and hit her and throw things at her. I might even kill her if I don't get help. She looks at me and tells me I love you so much. Before when she's smacking her with a brush with the bristle side on her leg. So you can't stop your wife from I, I hurting tried your to. I tried to pull. You tried? And I can't believe for a minute 
that you can't stop this from happening. What about the times that I begged you to take her because I told you I was going to hurt her? I've seen her beg him, and he leaves her there when she needs help. Mom's doing the damage, and Dad's not doing anything about it. I put her in the shower. She was screaming. I lost it. I turned the cold off and left her in there. And when she tried to get out, I wouldn't let her. Your daughter has got scalding hot water being poured on her body. She thinks that someday she might kill your daughter. Your daughter could end up dead. What am I supposed to do? Do something! My producers uh, tell me that you reached out, you called the show, um, you say you need help to stop abusing your child, and I'm really glad that you called. Because if we can stop this beautiful little child from being abused, then we're doing something. Um, But even so, you have to stand up. Um, in, in, in the prompter, it says that you started abusing your, your daughter at two months old. Uh, explain it to me, because I, I just can't comprehend that. I, I'm, a, I'm abusive to her. Um, I started when she was two months old. I started by pinching her to make her cry <laughs> so that my husband would help me with her. I was feeling overwhelmed. I, I didn't know what to do. Um, and I went from pinching to sm I'd smack her on the legs and I, I would start hitting her with objects. I hit her with brushes on the legs. I left marks on her. I have had to put winter clothes on her in order to take her out so people wouldn't see the marks on her. And I'm afraid that I might hurt her. I'm afraid that one day I'll, I might even kill her if I don't get help. I was abused as a child growing up. I grew up in a very abusive home, and I, I'm carrying on that abuse. At first, I didn't recognize that I was abusive until recently, the incident with the shower and I get mad, and I can't control what I do. I don't even know. It's like I don't know what I'm doing until it's done. But when, you're, when, <laughs> when your child is screaming in pain, right? I mean, scalding yes. hot water. I mean, I'd be screaming in pain if somebody's putting scalding hot water on me. When your child is screaming in pain, doesn't that wake you up and say, stop doing this? I've been so sick. That was the final straw. Yes. Um, is this your first child? My first, yes. You're, so this is, so, and I understand about uh, abuse, being abused, and then becoming an abuser yourself. And believe me, I saw it all the time as a policeman. But at some point, a two-month-old child, if, if I was in your house and I started slapping your daughter's legs, would you, would you stop me? I would have. Because you wouldn't want me hurt to hurt your child. And, and that's what I don't get. Like, how can you do it then? Honestly, I don't get it myself. Now, your daughter is two years old now, right? Does she ever say, Mommy, stop? She, she looks at me and she tells me I love you so much. I mean, what is going on in that little girl's head that your mom who she loves so much, is causing her all this pain. I don't know. I can only imagine. I put her in the shower. She was screaming. I lost it. I turned the cold off and left her in there. And when she tried to get out, I wouldn't let her. Your daughter has got scalding hot water being poured on her body. She thinks that someday she might kill your daughter. Your daughter could end up dead. What am I supposed to do? Do something! I put her in the shower. She was screaming. I lost it. I turned the cold off and left her in there. And when she tried to get out, I wouldn't let her. Tell me how you 
would scald your daughter? How did that happen? In the shower? Yeah. She had pooped in her underwear, and when I was trying to clean it, she didn't want it clean. She was screaming. I was already frustrated with the way my day was going as it was. Um, so I took her underwear off. I put her in the shower. She was screaming and screaming, and I lost it. I turned the cold off and left her in there. And when she tried to get out, I wouldn't let her. And I picked up the cup that I used to rinse her off with, and I poured it on her. And when it was done, I, call, I called my husband at work. Um, he was working with a friend to see if he could come home, and he wouldn't. Um, I told him exactly what had happened. I told him that she might even need medical attention, um, and he just kept telling me I don't know what to say. And then he hung up on me. Um, and then I started Googling um, parents scolding their children with hot water, and then I seen um, the majority of the children died. Their skin fell off, and I, I, that's what made me realize I need help. I started Googling how to tell if you're abusive. I mean, I knew that I had anger problems, but I didn't consider myself abusive until then, and I was going to turn myself into the cops, but I was told that that might not be, that's not going to fix the problem. And I was, it was suggested to me that I call you, and I did. You said you told your husband what you did, and he said, I don't know what to say. That's all he kept saying to me. And he didn't come home. It begged him to. <laughs> Why didn't he come home? I don't know. <laughs> does, does he see you abusing your daughter? He's seen it. What does he do about it? There's times he says something. The majority of the time, he doesn't. I mean, he sat there on the couch while I've hit her and hit her and thrown things at her. And he, he doesn't stop you. And you've asked him for help before? Multiple times. And... You're doing the abuse, and he's not doing anything about it. We have a picture of her daughter, right? The world could be a screwed up place. So you walk out your door, and you don't know what's going to happen, right? And then you have this little girl. Who's, who's protecting her? Not mom. Mom's doing the damage, and dad's not doing anything about it. How did this child get so unlucky that nobody is standing up for her? Nobody protects her. Nobody keeps the bad people away. Mommy, I love you. Please don't hurt me anymore. Can you stop? Is there a possibility that you could stop? I, I, that's why I want to get help. What, and what's your husband's malfunction? What, what's his problem? I don't know. I mean, is he a good husband? For the, For the most part, <laughs> except the part about not letting anybody hurt his children. That's a big part, though, of being a good husband, I would think. <laughs> a lot of times I'm like, get the hell off my stage. I don't want to help you. I want you to go rot in jail, but I can't do this here. I, I, I have to stop you from hurting and, and maybe possibly killing your own daughter. That's why you got to stay here. That's why I can't throw you off. That's why I can't scream at you and just say, get the hell out of here. Because I got to protect that little child. And again, I said earlier, I understand how somebody becomes an abuser. I know. I've seen it all too many times. But something in you's got to be strong enough to say, yeah, even though it happened to me, I'm not going to do it to my own child. It stops here.
before when she smacked me her with a brush with the bristle side on her leg. So you can't stop your wife from I, hurting I tried your daughter? To, I tried to pull. You tried? And I can't believe for a minute that you can't stop this from happening. She thinks that someday she might kill your daughter. Your daughter could end up dead. What am I supposed to do here? Do something! <laughs> Before when she smacked her with a brush with a bristle side on her leg. So you can't stop your wife from I, I hurting tried your daughter? To, I tried to pull. You tried? She thinks that someday she might kill your daughter. We're going to do something. We are going to put a stop to it today. But I, 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 a wife needs help. She's overburdened. She's dealing with her past. And she's doing terrible things to her daughter, and the husband doesn't do anything about it. And I have to ask myself, why? Why? Where's, where's the courage in the man? Where's his balls? <laughs> Let's find out where they're at. Let's bring out your husband, Sean. I try. I've tried to pull my daughter from her before when she smacked her with a brush with a bristle side on her leg. I was standing there. I tried pulling her away. What she did was she grabbed her leg. She dug her nails in her leg and tried to play tug of war with me. I got so pissed off with her. I slapped her so hard on her leg it left a bruise on my wife's leg. I couldn't control that myself. Story she is called twisted. her parents. Those are three different incidents. Her, her, in her family, they came, picked her up, and they took my daughter, and I didn't get to see my daughter for three months. That's twisted. <laughs> that he's telling like three to four different stories in one. So you can't stop your wife from I, hurting I tried your daughter? To, I tried to pull. You tried? No, I you tried, tried to pull my wife away from my daughter because if I try to pull my daughter away from my wife, we're probably going to end up playing tug of war. I don't want to stick my daughter in the middle of playing tug of war. What about the times that I begged you to take her because on, I told you I was going to hurt her? Your daughter is being hit with objects. Um, Your daughter is getting fingernails dug into her skin. Your daughter has got scalding, scalding hot water being poured on her body. And you're going to stand here and say you can't do anything about it? I'm not saying I can't do anything about it. I say I'm what are you saying then? How is it happening then? I'm trying. How is it happening? I'm trying, I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. Your best isn't good enough. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying my best. Then you shouldn't be a father. If that's, the, if that's your best... I told her the same question. If I came in your house... I would kill I, you. You would kill me. You and I have made it through my door. You would kill me. You would kill me, right? If I came in and started spraying hot water around the house and started attacking your daughter, you would kill me. I would kill you. You would kill me. Well, why... Why wouldn't you then do anything you could, even if it's your wife, your child... Your flesh and blood is being attacked. And you're telling me you can't stop it. You try. You try your best. What am I supposed to do? Sit there and play tug with my daughter? What are you supposed to daughter? do? You need me to tell you what to do? You need I'm me gonna, to tell you I'm what to do? sit there and play tug of war with my daughter. So then you do I'm something not else. Use her as a piece then of you rope. do something else. I'm trying. <laughs> You love her? Yes. You love her? Yes, I love her. How much do you love your daughter? I love her more than that. You love her more than her, right? Yes. That's an emotion I think we all can understand as parents. We love our spouses, but our kids, that's us, right? You can't pick up the phone? You can't call 911 and have her locked up? I don't know what to do. I mean... Why don't... When you see these horrible acts, when she says, I just scalded my daughter, why don't you have her locked up? 
Why don't you have her locked up? You said you don't know what to do. You got to stop it, right? She came on my stage and said she thinks that someday she might kill your daughter. And then what, what would you say then? Well, I, I, I tried my best. Yeah. That, is, that is weak, man. That is... What, listen, you don't, nobody has to be the toughest guy in the world. Nobody has to be the baddest But you give everything that you have to protect your children, man. And I can't believe for a minute that you can't stop this from happening. That you can't stop her from hurting your daughter. When she called you up on the phone and said, hey, I just scolded our daughter. She never said I just scolded her. She yeah. said I She's gave her. Lying? A, she said I gave her I a hot told bath. You everything. She's, She's standing on TV, in front of you know a couple hundred people in here. When it airs, about two million people are going to watch this. Why would she lie about it? She's saying that she did one of the most horrible things that a mother could do. She scolded her own daughter. She called me when and, I was in the middle of work. Yeah. I wasn't even in my car. I wasn't even driving. <laughs> Who gives a damn? Right. She and called you. you to she home. told me that I gave her a hot bath. I wasn't thinking it was scolding hot water. She never once told me you that. You witnessed she, her pinching your daughter. What did you think she did? I thought she gave her a bath that was warmer than usual. Well, you know what? The, see, I I, the part of the problem is you're a moron. You're a moron. <laughs> Who is going to stop this from ever happening again? I'm working on that. You're working on it? I'm... Your daughter could end up dead! Do something! <laughs> Who is going to stop this from ever happening again? I'm working on that. You're working on it? I'm... Your daughter could end up dead! Do something! Did she ever ask you for help with the child? Yes, and I helped. You help? Yes. Does she ever f- does she feel I've overburdened? From the does day? she over feel overburdened? Uh, times when I'm at work, yes. Okay. Did she ever tell you that she was a victim of abuse herself? Yes. Okay. And what's your thoughts on that? I mean, I'm trying to get her. What with are you help. trying to You keep saying I'm I, trying. What exactly we, are you trying we've to do? Got, Parenting classes for her. We started getting her in. I um, myself up. We started getting her into what is it? Anger management. And has she, she done anything for you? Abuse. Has he done anything for you? Just tell me. Has he has, has he got you somewhere? Did he get your car, honey? We're gonna. I got to get you help. We're gonna go here. It's been all me setting things up for myself. I've taken her to Birth and Beyond. Trying. I took her. I have to beg I've, him I've for done rides. Stuff. He I has mean, when you came two home, cars and three okay, motorcycles. You say, you say, I came home and I've checked okay. on my daughter. I you didn't. said that when she called you about the hot bath, you must have came home at some point, right? Yeah. You didn't come home as right away, As soon as though. I could have, I came home. When your shift ended or whatever, no, right? No. 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 Hours, I, hours Well, later. when did you come home? I got home as soon as I could. Like when I said, was that? Why, why? Where did you have to go after work? No, I was at work. Right, so you I didn't, was, um, did you come home straight after work? Yeah. And what happened? I didn't say anything to her, really. I went out and checked my daughter. And what, what did you observe on your daughter? There was nothing. I wasn't nothing? Even home when he got home. When I checked her. She didn't have any, any kind of red skin? No. The daughter's screaming? So, what, your wife made that story up? No. But what I'm saying is she wasn't red when I checked her. I checked her. Did you ask your daughter? No. Because she told me that she put her in a hot bath. So when I checked her... She wasn't red. She wasn't. Did you tell blistered. your husband you scalded your daughter? I did. I told she him didn't that tell it was me straight she scalded her. hot water. I told him that she might be injured. I told him that we should take her to the hospital to get checked out. And I wasn't even home when he got home. My, a family member had to come and pick me up and make sure that I was okay because I posted something about it on Facebook without actually saying it, crying out for help. Who's, who's, who's telling the truth there? Who's telling the truth? We both are, but it's... <laughs> um, she had blisters on the bottom of her toes. Well, I didn't check her toes. I checked her back, her butt, and her legs. Are you just... Uh, and I'm... I'm not even trying to be mean to you. 
Are you just not that smart? I'm smart. I mean... I... I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I'm not. I'm not the smartest guy in the world either. But I know how to take care of my children. I know how to make sure nothing bad happens to them, especially in my own house, right? When dad's home, nothing happens. And, and as, much, as much as I love my wife, and I love her, if she ever did anything intentional to hurt my children, I would have her locked up. And, and as much as she loves me, if I ever intentionally, deliberately hurt my children, she would have me locked up. <laughs> who, who is going to stop this from ever happening again? Who's going to do that? Because you haven't done anything. She hasn't done it. So who's going to do it? Who is going to do it? I'm working on that. You're working on it? I'm... How are you working on it? What have you done? Like I said, I've got her into classes. I've... Why haven't you picked up your daughter and said, I'm leaving? Here's the thing. Every time... Hold on. No, Hold on. Listen. No, you listen, listen. to me. Every time you know what? Classes and therapy and all that stuff listen, is good. But when there's an immediate danger, it doesn't to... mean And your daughter could end up dead. But every time I cry, she takes my daughter. She has her family come in my house. You came home and you had to check her because she told you. Take your daughter and leave. I know I have her family following me around here. Uh, you know what? what I don't care who follows me around. Follow me around. around. Call the police. Do something. He'd rather go out working on cars. That's what he does. He'd rather go working on cars. Somebody else's car. I've seen her beg him, and he leaves her there when she needs help. I've seen her beg him, and he leaves her there when she needs help. You're, you know what? You're one of those guys. Oh, you know, uh, what am I supposed to do? Oh, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying. No, but you know, see, a guy like you tries all he wants, and you get every time up the dump. Every time so I now get... explain to me, what do, you, what do you love about her so much? Every time You're worried I about her up? family, you're worried about her. Why, why do you stay with her? No, every time why I do you step stay up, with her? Like I said, why I, do you I, stay with her? I love her. I don't know why. I do. No, you don't know why. Okay, that's, that's great. That's great. You're in love with a woman. You can't explain why, and you let your daughter, who you I know is in danger, is... alone with her. She's, she's here. She says, I can't control myself. I either have to go to the police, or I'm coming to you for help, and I want... I need to stop this. And, and then I got you. You're, you're the reason you're here. Because you haven't done anything. And you, it seems to me like you can't do anything. You know, sometimes you don't worry about making the wrong decision when you're protecting somebody. Protecting your own daughter. Do you really give a... Do you think I would give a... If somebody's family was following me around? If I'm protecting my own daughter? It's not Let the... the right. Follow me around. It's not that they're you know following what? me around, it's that they take my daughter. You know daughter. what? Hold on a second here. I you're can't... here because you're worried about your daughter. You're, you're crying because you know what's happening with your daughter and what she's feeling. You say he's not helping. Lay it out right now. I want to hear to him what you got to say about this situation and what's going down and why your daughter's being hurt and why nobody's protecting her. I want you to tell him right now. Is it all? Is he lying? You are lying. You're no, not you're lying. fabricating everything right here. Every time no, I stand up and I say something or I do something, me you have your family. Me and my daughter come. up to help You took off the us. Fresno. What do you do about that? There's nothing I can I do. I would beg him every day to come and visit okay. me. When I was okay. right down the street, you never okay. bought me any diapers you, for her. You, you never helped takes, me with somebody her. Somebody takes your child and you can't do anything about it. I didn't even take her. I 
moved what if they her took to my your dog? I begged you to see her. Would I you begged do you to something help if somebody took her. your dog? I don't like dogs. <laughs> Why not? You're a dog. I mean, see, I mean, I can't throw her off the stage because I got to stop this from happening to your daughter. I got to do it because you can't. I mean, listen, you're both wrong. She's, she's as bad because she's actually doing the damage. But I can't believe I have a father on my stage that doesn't put a stop to it. All right. You get off my stage. We'll bring you out in a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> your mom is here. And your mom's name is Tina. Let's bring her out. I didn't know until... You told me all that night you brought her over. I didn't know that that happened. I didn't know. Not until you called me the next, what, a couple of days later? And then you told me that was you. Do you know, honey? I, I visualized the baby. Did you ever visualize her? I visualized her in a coffin, a little baby coffin, honey. Have you ever done that? Oh, my God, that just tore me apart whenever I even thought about that. She's two years old. She's defenseless all on her own. You cannot do this, baby. And I know you were abused as a child, and I'm so, so sorry you went through that. I really am. But I was there too. And I know when you would do things wrong as a child, I would lie and I would say that I did them. And I took the beating for you. Honey, you got to really try harder for your, for this baby, you know. It's got to stop, sweetie. I love you to death. But it has to stop, baby. You understand me? Baby, please. You don't mean to. But, you know, you don't have to call me. You can come over to my house any time you want, any day or night. And you can bring her over to the house. You know I'll take her. I know, and that's what I've done before. When he says that I just, my family just took her, it was because I cried out to them for help because I wasn't getting it. I really Well, first of all, Mom, this, this, this is... This is a heartbreaking story, and this is a frightening story. Listen, she's doing bad things, man. Bad yeah. things. But she's at least taken a step to end it. Yes. She's called. Uh, and, you know, we're going to get involved. We're going to, you know, we're going to make sure that this doesn't happen again, right? Yes. Uh, what I want to know is she's saying she can't help herself until she gets help. You got... You know, Mr. No Balls out there, he can't do anything. Will you be able to do something? I have seen her where she's hit her on the thigh before, and I walked in and I grabbed the baby up and I took her and I told her, I said, You need to stop. I said, I'm taking her now. I've heard you cry out to him and he does nothing. I said, But I'm going to help. You I'm heard, taking or her. You heard her cry out to her I've husband. I've seen her cry to him. I've seen her beg him. How can your wife sit there and cry to you and beg to you that she needs help and then you don't even... It's like he turns an ear to her. He'd rather go out working on cars. That's what he does. He'd rather go working on a car, somebody else's car. He does that enough at work, but he does it after work too. So he's gone all the time. And he leaves her there when she needs help. You need to hit me to help no. your daughter. Feel free. I'm not the guy that's abusing your daughter. I'm not sticking her under hot water. I pinched her. You know what? I'm the, I'm the guy that's here to help you. I'm the guy that's here to put I a know. stop to it. Um, your mom. Obviously in some horrible uh, relationships when you were younger. Yes, unfortunately. Sounds like some men abused you, abused your daughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to find that time. 
and I know it might be difficult. You have to go back to when you were a little girl, and you were terrified, and you were scared. And I bet more than anything you thought, I wish somebody would save me right now. I wish somebody could help me, protect me. And your little girl, so many years later now, is feeling that same fear that you had, that same scared. And, and you know, as children, they don't know. Like, they, they don't have the capacity that we have as adults to, like, you know, I'm going to call 911, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. They're just like, I'm here, I, and who's going to stop this? Who is going to stop this? Who's going to stop them from hurting me? And if it's not you, and if it's not him, you you got to find that in you. And use that as a step to like say, I'm never going to do this again. Do you ever want her to feel like you did? I don't. Some of the toughest times in life for everybody in here, me, everybody in here, there's times you've got to dig deep. And it's not easy, and you want to give up. There's times in my life I wanted to give up. But I said, I can't. I can't. I got two. I got people, my children, my wife, my family. They're all dependent on me. I can't give up. And if I'm not there, am I going to leave it up to somebody else to protect my children? Am I going to take the responsibility? Will anybody protect my children as much as I'll do it? No. There's not one person alive out there. What's his name again? Sean. What is it? Sean. Sean. Let's bring Sean back out here. Hey, man. My working on cars is my job. I run a business. I don't sit at home collecting social security. Don't put security. your fingers in my face. Okay. And you do I not work help. for what? every penny okay. I make. I have okay. seen Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This show is not about I grandma. I can't see how she can sit there and talk about me when she let years, her daughter family. get abused. That's what you care about? What she's saying out here? I called you a ballless wonder and you're not mad at me? Oh, I'm pissed at you. Oh, you're pissed at me. Well, I'm glad you're pissed. And I want that fire. That fire that you real pissed at me and that fire that you would use to, like, hurt me if I kicked in your no. door? Well, how about firing some of that fire right now? How about finding it, keeping it, to use it to protect your daughter? Yeah! Are, are you going to keep running? No, I just, I need to calm down, dude. I, I don't want you to calm down. <laughs> you should be fired up. I, I, you're, you're, you're running after work, you're fixing cars, you're doing everything. No. You're constantly running. I, I don't want to. Now you ran off stage. I when don't do want to end up running? striking you. When do you. I'm just trying to you calm want, down. If it's going to help your daughter, nah. if you need to hit me to help no. your daughter, feel free. I, I'm not the guy that's abusing your daughter. I'm not sticking her under hot water. water. I'm pinching her. You know what? I'm the, I'm the guy that's here to help you. I'm the guy that's here to put I a know. stop to it. Are you the guy? Are you the guy to put a stop to it? Yes. Yes. You want to help your daughter? You don't worry about somebody chasing you down. You don't worry about, oh, somebody's feelings. You know what you worry about? Your daughter, her feelings. Somebody grabs you, call the police. Somebody does something, you punch them in the face. If it's your wife, you take her and you leave. That's what you do. Someday, she's going to grow up and she's going to say, Daddy, why didn't you protect me? Daddy, why weren't you there? Why did you let this happen? And, and, are you going to want your daughter to grow up and ask you those questions? No. And she's not going to want to hear, well, Grandma did this and somebody did that. No, man. Dad should be able to solve everything. Dad should be able to protect your child. Dad is the guy that makes it happen. You're dead. I uh, know. You're dead. You go out there and you put a stop to it. Let's go. What we're going to do is we're going to stop this little girl from being hurt. That's what we're going to talk about right now. Yeah. 
Somebody's got to be bigger than everybody else on the stage right now. And each one of you need to feel that that's what they have to do. I need to be bigger than everybody right now. I need to be the best mom. I'm going to go get every piece of help I can get. And if nobody helps me, then I got to do it by myself. And every time I look at my daughter's eyes and she's crying, I'm going to stop. I never want to make my daughter cry again. You are going to say, I'll be there. I'll step in. Listen, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to get on anybody's ass. If I have to, I'll take the child. I'll step in while she gets help. And you got to say, I've made mistakes in the past. I didn't come home when I should have. I didn't spend enough time at home. I didn't say no to her. I didn't put a stop to it. You got to say, forget about everything else you did or didn't do. From this moment on, you got to say, you know what? I'm dead. And nobody, nobody is ever going to hurt my daughter again. Everybody, that sound like a good plan? Now, we're going to get you help. We're going to do everything we can to get you help to deal with the issues that are, are causing this for you. We're going to get you professional help. And you're coming back. You're coming back. And I'm saying this. If I read about it, I hear about it from all the people that were going to follow up with you, that somebody's hurting that child, as everybody here is a witness, I personally will come down I will enter that apartment, and you might have to kill me because I'll do everything I can to stop somebody from hurting that child. But I truly believe that is not going to be necessary because you are going to step up to the plate now, right? I am. You're going to do everything you have to to protect that little girl, right? All right. This is definitely a story. Once you walk off the stage, this story's not over. This story continues. And you're going to be back. And you're going to tell us how you overcame these issues. How you're the best mom in the world now. How you've never hit your daughter again and you never will. And you're going to be back and you're going to tell us how you've stepped it up. And you're a great dad now. And you're going to be back on the stage, and you're going to tell that success story. Do we understand? Let's go. I'm, like I said, I'm 14. I want to have a baby. At 14, I could barely take care of my dog. Send me to hell. I kill someone, you're not having a baby. I want a baby for the love that I can't get from you, nor my father. My father left when I was a baby, and my mother tells me it's because of me. It's probably hurtful enough that her father's not in her life, and it doesn't help when mom's saying, it's because of you, why he's not. Mommy? She wants to have this baby to hurt you. And to put this girl in juvenile hall, for So not. that just doesn't help? If you're not going to listen to her, listen to what I have to say, because I've been there. I got pregnant at 15. Here's your future talking to you. This is you in eight years. At some point, somebody has to be an adult here and say, you're not running the show. I know exactly where your father is. Would you like your father to be in your life? Yes. I'll take you to go see your father and meet him for the first time. Welcome to the show. My first guest is Shalanda. And Shalanda, how old are you? 14. You're 14 years old. Yes. And why are you here today? Well, Steve, I'm here today because, um, as you said, I'm 14 years old and I want a baby. You want a baby? Yes. And my mom called your show because she thinks I'm out of control teenager. I've been running away off and on for the last three months of this year. Why does your mom think you're, first of all, mm -hmm. we'll get, we're going to get to why you want to have a baby. Mm -hmm. I mean, at 14, I, yes. let me just tell you right now, this isn't meant to be mean to you, <laughs> but it is ridiculous to think that you want a baby at 14. It is, but if you live the lifestyle I've lived. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. At 14, all you're going to do is complicate your life by bringing a child in. It's children cannot raise children. 
It's as simple as that. Well, I'm a child raising three kids already, so it really doesn't even matter. I'm sorry, what did you say? I'm a child, I'm 14, I'm raising three kids at home already. Now, they're not mine, but they're my mother's. And I bathe them, take care of them, you know, I've been raising them since they were barely like two years old, since I was 11. I know how to take care of kids. I'm not new at this, so if I have my plan already when I turn 15 and I have what, a job, what, what is your plan? Well, when I turn 15, because I can't get a job, I'll get a job, and I'll raise my money, and then when I turn 15, I'll get pregnant. You no, know, not like by anybody, but I'll have, I'll, when, I have my, when I get pregnant. When I turn 16, I'll have my baby, and then I have my plan worked out, because it's nothing new. So your plan is a job and money, and that's going to be good enough to bring a child into the world. Mm-hmm. Job and money. And, yeah. Everybody's different. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not saying the way I did it's the right way or the wrong way. Don't you want it at 14? When I was 14 years old, I wanted to go to Cubs games and collect baseball cards. No. I didn't want to have a child. But I do. I could barely take care of my dog. And you want to bring a child into the world? I know, but I, I understand. I raise a newborn. I wake up in the morning. And so you're raising, uh, you said, since 11 years old, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're four. And sometimes you're mad that you... you no, could, I don't get mad. You it's, never get mad. I never get mad. But what I want to, in return is to have freedom. That's what I want. And I know once I have my child, I won't have freedom, but I'll have somebody to love me. That's basically all I want. What about these kids you're raising now? Don't they, they love you? They love me, but they're not mine. And come on now, I'm 14, like I said. I'm... I'm not childish. I'm immature. I'm mature. I'm not immature, but I'm mature. I'm in the level between. But you're saying your mom shouldn't be letting you mm -hmm. in leave the house you with alone, three kids, taking care of three kids, unattended. unattended. Mm -hmm. So you're making so my if, so you're making my case for me. No, it's your not mom that. shouldn't do that, and she shouldn't let you have a kid at 14. She's not letting me. It's not what she says. I can really you no. Know, I'm not saying she's a bad parent, but if I want to do that, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm trying to talk you out of it. But you can't. Why? It's, it's not. I'm not. I'm, it's not like I'm pregnant right now, trying to get pregnant at 15, 14. When I turn 15, that's my plan: get a job. Have are you sexually active? Yes. And are you trying to have a child? Not right now. No, I'm trying to find the perfect guy to have a child with. I, you know, I, you scare me. How? Because I know that my daughter's going to be 14 someday. Mm-hmm. And I can't imagine my 14-year-old daughter having sex. It's, that that's not the point. Though. That is the point. It scares your, me. The fourteen-year-old, uh, when your daughter turns fourteen and she has the capability to watch three kids and love three children, she's going to want her own child one day. Yeah, and I hope that day comes when she's an adult. Not for me. Send me to hell if I kill someone. You're not having a baby. Yeah, exactly. when you're talking about bringing a child into the world, okay, I throw you in no, jail too. I know exactly where your father is. I'll take you to go see your father and meet him for the first time. Well, let me ask you, why are you here today? Because I'm, like I said, I'm 14 and I want to have a baby. And my mother thinks I'm out of control. She wants help. But why did you agree to come here? Did you think I was going to help you get a baby? No. <laughs> um, did you think I would take your side of it? No, I... Really, no, I need help, like, with my, like, personal problems with my mother because, you know, I can't communicate with her. I wouldn't be having these thoughts if I can tell my mother what I'm thinking. Like, come on out. I can't tell her nothing because if I feel like I tell her something, she's going to run her mouth. So that's like me telling, oh, yeah, mother, I want a baby. She doesn't talk me out of it. That's, like, the problem I'm having with her now. So if she, if she could come to me and tell me, child, you shouldn't do that, I would, I would listen to her. She doesn't say that. She sits there and, like, okay, whatever. That's not, she laughs at it. That, like, that's, like, the thing she does. So, obviously, if I'm standing here, I mean, sitting here right now, telling I want a baby at 14, she's not, she's not really doing her job as a parent. That's really how I feel. I agree with you. So, that's, like, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but... Well, um, let, me, let, me, let me ask you, Shalanda. Is it more that you're kind of just hurt that your mom and maybe you're... you're I, don't have, I don't have a father, as you can see. I don't have a father. I don't have a, a, a man to love me. If I feel that I can have a child and have someone to love me the way I love my mother and my three little, my three little brothers and sisters, that's basically all I want is love. Let me, I want you to think about this for a second and really give me an honest answer. Is this more of you wanting your mom to be in your life the, and to be a mother to you then it's really about you wanting to be a mother at 15 years old? 
I want my mother to love me. But if your mom said, and she loved you, and, and she acted the way you want her to, and show you attention, spend time with you, mm -hmm. and if she said to you, Shalanda, you're too young to have a baby, would you listen to your mother? Not now. Why? Because that's, it's like, I already know what I want to do. It's like, if, if I would have came to her in, in the beginning, I would have, I would have took her advice, but now it's so far along. I've been wanting a baby since, like, last year that's not nothing it's like that's like you can't bring back the past and like oh yeah mother i wanted the baby at 13. that's been a year you can't change the plans yeah but couldn't you know i'm talking to you now and i'm trying to talk to you and share my life experience with you and and really prevent something that's not going to be good for you mm -hmm. i'm not up here saying don't have a kid because it'll make your life better i'm really telling you that because it's just going to make your life harder right now you have your whole life ahead of you. I understand that, but I feel like if I have my child, I have I have friends. Not only not only if I have my mother, I have family, other family members, cousins that can support me. That's that's basically all I need. You know, but that's not how you raise children. You know, it's not, you can't know. rely on cousins and friends and everybody else. You know what? When it comes down to it, you got when you bring a child into the world, you count on yourself. That's, I know. And then that's who your child is counting on you. Look at you. You don't even have your father in your life, right? No, I don't. That's got to be kind of hurtful, right? It is. Do you wonder about your father? Sometimes. Why, why don't you see your father? Well, I've never seen a, my father a day in my life. And, um, um, basically, my father left when I was a baby. I never got the chance to see him. And to me, it feels like my father left because of my mother. And my mother tells me it's because of me. So if I feel like I don't have a father, like... To my mother, it's like, I don't know what it is to her. Let me ask you a simple question. Does, is it hurtful that you feel like your father's not in your life? Yes, it would is. Would you like your father to be in your life? Yes. And you would have liked him to have been in your life since you were born? Since I was born. So wouldn't you possibly doing it, be doing that to your child? Do you think that some young man that you're sleeping with now, if you bring a child into the world, do you really think at 15, 16, 17, I don't know how old I the guy is? I wouldn't that to happen to my child. But do you think that guy's going to stick around and, like, raise a child? I want a baby so bad, it doesn't even matter if a, if a, if a dude, if I, love the, if I love him, I would be willing to have his baby. If he's not there, he's not there. If you're not going to listen to her, listen to what I have to say, because I've been there. I got pregnant at 15. Here's your future talking to you. Yes. This is you in eight years. I know exactly where your father is. Would you like your father to be in your life? Yes. I'll take you to go see your father and meet him for the first time. You know what I think? I think you want your mother or your father in your life. That's what I really believe. Let's bring your mom, Chandra, out. Let's hear what she has to say about this. How you doing, ma'am? Hi. Bye. Um, Shalanda? You... I love you a lot. I love you, too. And let me tell you, it's hard being a mother. I got five, and I just started going to school. I'm just not trying to go to school to get a bachelor's degree. I had to put my life on hold because that was my choice. Okay, I understand okay? that. It is, you're not having a baby. Yes, God I am. Is, I God want... is my witness. Okay, you're not having a baby. You can't stop me. Yes. I want a you child. You know what? God is my witness. No, I can't stop you, but it's my job to try to make a way to, to let you know that that is not okay. I've done everything I could do for you. Okay, I, I understand you, that. You had your own room. Okay. You know, you, you had listen, cell phones. Listen to your mom. Listen. You had cell phones. You know, I let you go to parties. You spend up your you friend's house. You didn't let house. me go to parties. Yeah, well, maybe that's true. But I let you go to your friend's house to spend the night. You know, I gave you more freedom than I can let you have. Give your mom a chance. No, I don't want to listen to her. She can't I know you don't it. want to, but you will listen to okay, her. Okay, I'm going to listen okay? to her, but I'm not going to understand. I'm not. Just listen, dear, okay? That's not an act of maturity that you're showing right now. Somebody that would be able to raise a child. I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to listen. You're acting like a child right now. No, I'm not. <laughs> You're not having a baby. Part of the problem is the two of you can't talk to each other. True. If, this is, if this is the way you talk to each other at home, I can see why nothing gets through to anybody's head. Now, Mom, I want you to listen to your daughter, okay? Because there's a problem here. 
that she's running away, that she's, she wants a child at 14. I'm on your side here as far as I wouldn't want my 14-year-old daughter to have a child. And I would do, be like you, I would do everything I could to stop it. And I'm trying everything I can to stop with your daughter. But what I want you to do is listen to your daughter right now and give her a chance to talk. Shalana, so here's your chance. Talk to your mom. All right. I understand you don't want me to have a baby, but I want a baby for the love that I can't get from you nor my father. The pressure you put me through, watching your kids, trying to manage with school, homework, doing your chore, doing your housework, and washing sometimes your clothes. That's just too much. You call me a child, but at the same time, you want me to be mature and watch three children on my own without the help of my, my, own, my um, sister. That's hard. And for me to do that, I feel like, why should I have to watch three children? I can go out and have my own and take care of my own child, and that's just one. And you can stop treating me like a child and make it seem like I'm like an adult and stop trying to treat me like a baby, because I'm not a baby. Can I tell you that when I was 21, I didn't know what I was doing? Can I tell you that? I, I was understand. 21. I understand. I didn't know what I was doing. But and if you if you, if you was in my age right now, watching three children, you would not say that. And I'm sorry that you feel that you don't have a mother and a father. Shalanda, I believe that, you know, that God says, he helped me out even more. He ain't helping me out less because I'm by myself. He's helping me out more. And I go with that strength that God has given me every day to protect my children, to do what I'm supposed to do. You say that, but when you leave me with your three children, you turn your phone off. You if I'm in, okay. No. Mom, is it, is it true that maybe you're putting too much on a 14-year-old to, to ask her to watch three children and one's a baby, right? No, well, my youngest is seven. Okay, so she's watching three young children, right? Yes. Isn't that a lot to ask for of a 14-year-old? Yes. I mean, how often is this every day that she has to do this? She, she will say every day. I, go, I do go to school. I do work. There's times, I'm not going to lie, I go to the club with my friends or, you know, if I got to go shopping, you know. I think that a lot of things is I don't Let like me, the no, moment. No, wait, let's back up, Mom. Okay. If you're asking your 14-year-old daughter to help with the family, I understand that. She's definitely smart enough to watch children. I believe that. Having one, totally different story. But if your daughter is feeling all this pressure of having to raise these three children while you work a lot, but then when you have time, Dom, where you can be at home with your children, is it responsible to be going out with clubs with your friends? No. I mean, no. you have to make a decision. Who do you want to spend time with? If you're, if you're working so much, you say you work two jobs or? I, I did. I worked two you jobs. You were two jobs. Okay. You're doing the right thing. You're, you're working hard to support your family. But, you know, then I hear it out of the next world. But, you know, I know I shouldn't go out to clubs with my friends, you know. Well, then why don't you make a decision? You know. Here are your 14-year-old daughters talking about having a baby. She wants a baby when she's 15. Don't you say, well, you know what, I'm not going out. I'm going to stay at home and spend some time with my daughter and maybe prevent this. I, I did not know that I, I can, I mean, I'm not perfect, you know. Nobody is. And I'm not perfect, and I, and I, and I granted, I shouldn't go to clubs. You know, maybe I shouldn't go to clubs, but it's not that it's every day. It's not even every month. It's more every every. Five or six months. I might at least go once or twice. So I mainly I go with family, an event. But I do agree that I shouldn't put all the responsibility on her while watching my kids. And did you did you tell your daughter that it was her fault that her father's not in her life? No. Yes, you do. When you're mad at me, yes, you do. No. I, you've you never you've never said that to her. I, God is my witness. I want to believe I didn't. Because look, can I tell you why? Well, hold on, mom. I think as a parent, you either know you said that to I your child or you didn't. I didn't say that. And the reason why I know I wouldn't say that... Is, is, is she lying about that? No, because I'm not, I'm not going to just get into our life story, but at a, at a time when we have got into an argument and I said, I don't like you, you're, I call, I, like, you're not my mother, you're, you're Sandra to me. She's like, well, if you don't have me, you don't have your father, and your father's not here because of you, and I'm your mother and your father, so there's no father in your life, so it doesn't even matter about your father. That's exactly what she says. That is, I, she, is she making that up? I would say she's not, but in, in defense... Mom, let, let, wait, mom, let me finish, let just me be, finish, let's, let's let me be finish. honest I am going to be honest with you. 
In my defense, I would say to her at the same time, she was running away. She was giving me all these trouble. And, and I could not, I'm not saying, Steve, one justifies the other. And I'm not saying that. But she put me through a lot from January until May to where if I said to her, I said a lot of angry stuff to her within that time frame. So if she's sitting here telling you I said it, she's pretty honest. She, I mean, she's more honest, I'm going to be honest with you, than what I would be. You're the adult. You have to take the high road. And you don't ever make your kids feel bad why there's a, a, not a father in the, in, first of all, it's probably hurtful enough that her father's not in her life. And it doesn't help when mom's saying, it's because of you why he's not. <laughs> you are acting like a child. I'm going to do it, and I don't care. That's how a child acts. All I got to do is one easy little, little thing, or oh, I'm calling your probation officer. Thank you. Not exactly. Yeah, when you're talking about bringing a child into the world, okay. I'm throwing you in no. jail, too. But I'm just saying, if I said that, I, I know it's wrong. But at the same time, when she's running away, she's, you know, Mom, don't know she where wants, she's going. She wants to have this baby to hurt you. That's what she wants to do. I don't believe that. I don't believe she that, wants that, that's it. That is. To hurt me? It is. It is. I wanted to make sure I got this right. Because you're saying it because I want you to watch my three. Because I asked you to help with your brother's If sisters. I didn't watch your three kids, and I had to watch a whole bunch of kids, I wouldn't want a baby. But taking care of three kids and learning what to do, that's like, okay, well, I might as well just have my own and take care of my own instead of three and having to watch a whole bunch of other kids. So, like, can I ask you this? If I have to say, and I have to keep my promise, that I would not let you watch my kids, would you promise me that this would be something that you would consider until you get through with college? Could, I, or even until you get through with high school? I can't. Why not? Because I already want a baby. Okay, but, I, but could you please reconsider? Could you just reconsider? I think to me that's reasonable. Could you reconsider? Could you help me out? You're too young. You, you, you should be enjoying... I understand. I'm not enjoying my childhood. If I, if I was out having listen, fun with my listen. friends, I wouldn't think about having a baby. If I were right young... I can't let you have fun with your friends. You run away. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. You don't you're, trust you're, me. You so don't even matter. Hold on. Stop. Stop. Mom, I got to say, you're giving me a headache. <laughs> but here the, the, the situation is, if I move into your house and I'm the man at the house and I know that you're 14 years old and you're having sex and you're going to be running away, guess what? You're not going out. You're okay. going to stay home. Okay, but if I stay in the house watching your three kids, ain't no reason for me to stay in the house. And then I know I can just go out automatically when you're sleeping and get why, pregnant. Why are you running away? Because the pressure she's put me through. You got to do this. And now that I'm back and I'm on probation, I got to do everything she says or she's going to put me in juvie. I still regret it. I don't care. I, I'm, that's not going to make me feel like you're a slave and listen to everything you do. I didn't put her in juvie because of just, hey, let me call the police. Shalanda, I mean, as much as you might not like to hear this, mm -hmm. and as much as I didn't like to hear it when I was 14, you have rules. If you run away, yeah. And if your mom can't control you, that's what she's supposed to do, call the police. If you're not they gonna can't listen, control me. well, when you're when you're in the Audi home, they can control you, right? Because you ain't going anywhere. Okay. Is that where you want to be? Obviously, if I'm living with her, that's where I'm going to end up. We've had somebody that was on the show before, and they've come here to try to help you, to try to talk some sense into you. Mm -hmm. So let's bring her out and let's hear what she has to say. <laughs> and I I want you to listen, okay? Hi. Hi. I've been listening to you out there. If you're not going to listen to her, listen to what I have to say because I've been there. I'm 22 years old. I have three kids. I got pregnant at 15, had my baby at 16, and it was hard. And I had to have my mom there because I couldn't do it by myself. And I hear you out here saying, you want a baby, you have a plan, and this and that. Oh, I had plans, too. I had, I had to put my life on hold for my kids. I wanted to be a model, and I couldn't do that. You know why? Because I had to make sure I work, go to school, to make sure my kids have f diapers, wipes, food. I, need to, I didn't have no car. I had to get on the bus, take my daughter to school, and then take myself to school on the bus. Are you ready for this? Yeah. You're ready for this. Mm -hmm. I don't think you are. I mean, you can look that way, but I'm serious right now. You know? Yeah. You say you're a slave now. When you have that baby, 
that you say you're going to have, you're going to really be a slave. Here's the truth is, here's your future. Here's your future talking to you. I'm still working this to is take you. care of this my is, kids. This is you in eight years. All I want is one. She got three. Oh, you I know what? Once you have one, I didn't want, want any. I got five. Well, I wouldn't take it back. But I have them now. And now I have to work for my kids. You don't work for yourself. You don't go out and work for yourself, have money for yourself. You have money for them kids to live on. Let me ask you a question. And I don't even know this. You were on the show before, right? Oh, yes. And when you were, you said you, had, you, you got pregnant at 15 and you had a child at 16. Mm -hmm. The man that had that child with you when you were 16 years old, is he still in the picture? No. They're does not going to be around. Does he provide you with really anything for this child? I well, do it on my own. But see, see, that's the problem here. I keep trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. You say you'll be okay with it, but you're not okay with that your own father's not in your life. And you'll be doing the same thing that hurts you now to your own child. Exactly. See, the scary thing is, it's with this child here, and I hear it, and, you know, my father probably would have handled the situation a little differently with me. Um, <laughs> but my thing is, your mother comes out. She's admitted she's made mistakes. I'm sitting here hearing a child saying, and when I say child, you are acting like a child. I'm going to do it, and I don't care. That's how a child acts. You know what a, a, an adult does? You know what? I better stop and think about this. I better make the best decision I can for myself, for my family. And the best decision is, is to get a career. Mm -hmm. You know, here Natalie, Natalie's been on the show. She's been through the same thing that you've been through. Because yeah, I'm I can't. You, I don't the, know how much more that I can do by, to bring a woman, uh, bring a woman that's done exactly what you've done, and is advising you against it, is telling you you are going to screw up your life. We're not all telling you this because we don't want what's best for you. We don't want what's best for for you to have a good time, to have fun. Yeah, we want that for you. We want you to enjoy your childhood. We don't want you to screw it up. And you know what I get sick of? I got sick of it when I was being a policeman. I get sick of it now when I read the paper. Children having children. You're going to need handouts. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You don't have the uh, life experience. You don't have the maturity level to pass on to your child when you're 15 years old. And then what happens? Your child is going to be 14 or 15 and goes, well, my mom did it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And my dad ain't around. And, and she said it's because you... you You'll end up saying the same thing to your child that she said to you. Believe me. And you don't, you said you have this big plan, and I'm telling you, I'm a little frustrated because we're up here not trying to make your life worse, we're trying to make it better and talk some sense into you. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I'm talking to a brick wall. Mm -hmm. You know, your mom's saying she made a mistake, here's a young woman saying I did the exact same thing, and you're, you're sitting there like, you know, uh, a spoiled child saying, I'd rather be in the Audi home. Okay, she says that, but one... Now I'm talking about what you're saying right now. What you're saying. Mm. You really want to go back to the Audi home? Because I know I dropped off the, lots of kids there. And I know as a grown man, I don't even want to spend the night in the Audi home. Mm. I mean, it, all it is is a mini jail. And kids are mean to each other in there. I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. And you'd rather be there than at home? Your mom's here. I don't have a choice, so it don't even matter. You don't you have, do a, have choice. a choice. You do have a choice. It's your choice. No. All I got to do is one itty bitty little thing. Oh, I'm calling your probation officer. Thank you. Not exactly. Yeah, when you're talking about bringing a child into the world, okay. I'd throw you in no, jail, too. Even, what? That's not, that's not the issue. Oh, that is the issue. That's okay. why you're on the okay, show today. Exactly. But I'm talking about if I go home. Oh, you're getting an attitude. Oh, don't make me call your probation officer. Stupid you're getting an attitude like now. I, with I, her, totally with me, is. with mm -hmm. the audience, with everybody you have an attitude. Mm -hmm. I mean, at some point, yes, I want to be sympathetic, and I want to help you out. But at some point, somebody has to be an adult here and say, you're not running the show. Mm -hmm. And that has to be you. Well, let's go meet your father for the first time. If you wanted to meet your dad, mm -hmm. he's here. I got him for you. I feel like you should have been there from day one, because I've never seen you.
treat her like an adult sometimes and then treat her like a child another. Exactly. You can't do that. You can't play both sides. You have to be firm and be the adult all times. So... I know that. If, 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 but it's hard. Can I say it's hard? Because at the same time, I, I want to give her freedom. I want to give her the independence. And it's not that I want to. It's just that she, her, she's missing that part of her life. You know, she's missing that, ex, that person that's a part of her well, life. She said so, that you need so, she needs someone to talk to. How come you don't sit down with this woman right here that she says goes and that she wants... Because she goes and runs her well, mouth to the family members, her friends. That's why I'm telling her nothing. That, that, that could be true. Oh, but geez. let me say this. Okay, you know what? Everybody stop. Everybody stop. We've gotten to the point now, which, you know, we're just going back and forth here. Mom has, has taken responsibility. She has said she has taken advantage of you. That's, that means something. Mm. It does, whether you like it or not. Eight for her to day, come on and say, I'm, listen. I understand. Okay? Mm -hmm. She came on the show. She came on the show because they care about you, and they don't want you to make a mistake. So what I want to do now is, Mom and Natalie, I thank you for coming on. Thank you for no problem. being there for her. I really hope you don't do that. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to um, really, really put a hold on your life. I'd, I'd like to ask the two of you to leave the stage right now. I want to talk you. to them. Thank you. Thank you. You got a lot of issues with your mom. I understand that. I understand you might be angry with her. But it's, it's, it's real simple. You can't, have, you, you can't have a kid. You can't have a child right now because you're too damn young. You're too damn young. <laughs> and you said yourself, you said yourself that you're doing this because you're mad at your mom and you want to get back at her and, you know, not take care of her kids. Is that the reason why to have a, a child? Think about it. That's not to bring the reason. A, but, you know, to bring a human life into the world mm -hmm. is because you're mad at someone? It's the exact opposite of why you're bringing a child into the world. It's because you love someone that you're bringing a child into the world. So let's not confuse it. You don't bring children into the world because you're mad. And I think part of it is, you're mad because your father's not in your life, right? That too. And you were told, you know, she's made a mistake. And she said, your dad's not in your life because of you. Well, I don't think that's true. I don't think your dad took off because well, you. I, never, I don't know because I never met him. So. Well, it's, I don't know what the reason is. But I'm guessing maybe it was probably they couldn't get along. I mean, that's probably the obvious answer, right? You have trouble getting along with your own mom. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that maybe he had trouble getting along with your mom. But that doesn't excuse the fact that he's not been in your life. That doesn't excuse the fact. Mm -hmm. Now, what if I told you I know exactly where your father is? And I could take it to him. See, we contacted your father, and he was supposed to show up on the show. He hasn't seen you since you've been three months old. And he was supposed to be here today. And you know what? For some reason, he didn't show up. My mother. No. Me, so I tell him? I don't know why. You, you, you asked us to find your father, right? Well, we found him. And I'm asking you, would you like to meet your father? I, he wouldn't come, so what I'm telling you, I'll take you to go see your father and meet him for the first time. <laughs> Do you want to meet your father? Yes. Well, I don't know what reason why he didn't come here today because we sent the car for him and he didn't show up. But since he won't come see you, I'm going to take you to him. If it's all right with your mother and if it's all right with you. I'm going to bring, let's bring mom back out. Is it, is it all right if I take your daughter to her father yeah. with you? Yeah. Would you go with? I would go with you. Do you want to go meet your father for the first time? <laughs> Are you ready Thank for you. this? You ready to do this? Well, yes. let's go meet your father for the first time. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. 
Well, I love this So you're Roy, and you're Shalanda's dad. Yes. And so your daughter was on the show. She's 14 years old, and she's talking about she's 14. She wants to have a child when she's 15. She hasn't seen you ever, really. I mean, you saw her when she was born. She was nine months old. And since problems with her and your mother, for whatever reason, you haven't been in her life, I think she's hurting because... Her mother hasn't always been there for her and put a lot of pressure on her, raising three of her children. And I think she really wants to meet you. And I told her I'd do everything I can to come and find you and, and have you come and talk to your daughter. So I'd like to bring your daughter in and you can talk to her, okay? Fine. All right, Roy. Come here, Shalanda. This is, this is your father, Roy. Okay. It's all right, baby. It's okay. <laughs> now, Shalanda. One of the reasons why I came down here and got your father was because you came on the show today and you said, you know, you've had problems and you want to have a baby at 15. And I talked a little bit with your father and you know what? Your father's concerned about you and he wants to be, I don't want to put words in your right. mouth, but you... I've been you, searching for you for a long time, boo. And he oh, wants yeah. to be in your life. What is a father, can you... I didn't have you when I was young. So I know you're going through some stuff, but don't worry about it, baby. It's going to be all right. Don't cry. It's all right, boo. It's all right, baby. You got a lot to talk about. You good? Thank you, Steve. <laughs> now listen, I, I got your father back in your life, right? I came and I got him and I brought you to him. So now you got to do me a favor. You do me a favor. You're going to listen to your dad. And if your dad says he doesn't think it's wise for you to have a child, you're going to take some advice from him. This is your father now. Okay? What do you want to say to your father? I don't like you should have been there from day one. There's a lot we need to talk about. <laughs> you know, maybe you got to wipe the slate clean now and... And he is here now, and he wants to be involved in your life. And you want somebody in your life. You gotta give. You gotta give him a chance. It's gonna be okay, boo boo. I know this is a lot at 14. <laughs> you know, it's a lot. But, you know, your mom on the show said she's willing to make some changes. And now your father's here. He's standing right in front of you. You, you wanted your dad. You wanted to meet your dad. Mm -hmm. He's here. I got him for you. And I know it's a lot to take in in one, one day for a 14-year-old. But now, just slow down. Take That's some time. You want like I want to go now? Believe me. This year was our year because I was coming to you this year, believe me. Are you happy to see your dad? This right now has to be about really moving forward. That's all and, I and, and you know, and forgetting about the past. A relationship didn't work out between him and your mom, but that happens all the time. And you know what? He wants to be in your life. He's been fighting to get in your life. He's proven that to me. So I think moving forward, I to prove that. And what, I, what I think now is moving forward, and Roy, I brought your daughter to you, just, you know, be a part of her life, be good to her, you know, you got, here's your dad standing right in front of you, right. your mom's willing to make changes, your dad's in your life now, he's standing here, this is about moving forward and putting a 14 year old girl on the right track.
and get you to start thinking straight again. We're gonna make it work? Yeah, I never had no doubt. Okay. Roy, now that I brought your daughter to you, promise me man to man, man that you're gonna be in her life from now on. From day, from this day forward. Good luck to you, Roy. Alright, right. Shonda. Good luck to you, honey. Thank you, sweetie. Listen to your dad now, okay? Okay. Alright. We're gonna leave you guys alone. And you know what? We're gonna follow up. I'm gonna make sure that your mom's making the changes and the dad's staying in your life, okay? I'm going nowhere. You got my number too, Roy. You need anything, you need help to get in her, and you need help, if she doesn't listen to you, you call me, we'll do it together. All right. All right. Good luck to you. A lot of young people watching the show. We try to make them aware of all the dangers out there. I was out on my own at 12, so I got into drugs and I got into gangs. When I was 17, I was forced into prostitution. They told me that I could get in the front seat or I would be in pieces in his trunk. I was scared. I was alone. I felt hopeless. Bullying has become an epidemic in our country. People in my school do call me a bully. I call her a whore. Skanks. Go kill yourself. Just for the hell of it. I just feel like worthless. I feel like I'm not as pretty as other girls are. Every day I would bully her. I just want to put an end to bullying. I want to just stop it. Tragically, this past year, 10 teenagers have committed suicide due to these actions. The family of one of those teens joins us today. Not ever in a million years ever would I thought it would come to this, ever. In December of 2011, headlines read, Craigslist child trafficker sentenced to 30 years in prison. And today, the teenage victim who was kidnapped, beaten, and forced into prostitution is here. Mariah is now 19 years old, and she wants to share her story. When I was 17, I was forced into prostitution by a 40-year-old man. He told me that I could get in the front seat or I would be in pieces in his trunk. I believed him, and I got in the car. He posted ads every day, a couple times a day on the internet. These guys who, who would pay for sex would call the phones and set up appointments. When you are a prostitute and you have a pimp, he owns you. You can't even say that a pimp raped you. You can't tell him no. You're, you're a piece of property. You're a slave. He beat me with a belt and left dark purple bleeding welts on my legs and my back. I have scars from belt buckles. I have scars from extension cord. He smacked me in the face so hard that he bloodied my nose. And he hit me again and he knocked the side of my face into the table and I have a chipped tooth. He would beat me because I wasn't wearing makeup or I didn't answer the hotel room door in heels. He sprayed me in the face with mace. And he held my jaw shut and asked me if I was scared to die yet. All of this went on for months on a daily basis. There was no break, there was no relief. He moved me an hour away from all of my friends and my family. There was nowhere I could go. There was nothing I could do. I was scared. I was alone. I felt hopeless. Once you have somebody in your face telling you that there's nothing you can do and there's nowhere you can go, you just, you're ready to die. Mariah, you called the show. Why are you here? Well, um, I have a story that needs to be heard, and um, I have a lot of ambitions to... Um, do something to make sure that what happened to me doesn't happen to anybody else. And if it does happen, um, the girls know where to go and have some type of resource and some hope. And I knew that um, once you heard about this, maybe you could um, spread the word to the girls that are coming onto your show with drug addictions or, or in prostitution themselves. Well, the one thing that we try to do on the show is a lot of young people watching the show, make them aware of all the dangers exactly. out there. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
And it's a story that you read about in the paper from time to time, and you wonder, like I wonder when I read the paper, like how does this happen? Right. Um, especially at this day and age, right? Start with how was it growing up for you? I had a really rough childhood, and I was out on my own at 12. I got my first job then, and um, I've been on my own ever since. So I got into drugs, and I got into gangs, and I lived in a rough neighborhood, but I knew I didn't want to be like that, so I turned everything around. Um, I'd been clean two years, got a full-time job. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I got a full-time job working at a motorcycle junkyard. I loved it. Um, I was going to school. I was on honor roll, made up all of my credits, um, getting ready to graduate. Um, and then I needed a new job. So I um, hit up a friend of mine who I went to school with, and um, she, she sent me to this guy who was her dad. And um, he owned a, a window company, a window cleaning company. So I got a hold of him, and that's how that started. So you went there thinking you were going to work in the mm -hmm. window cleaning business? Being his secretary. And I did that for almost two months. And what happened? Um, well, then uh, he came back to the house. It was a, he ran the business out of his home. Um, and he had a woman with him who is um, dressed very, not in, not in near enough clothes. But I didn't think anything of it. And she took one look at me and said, God, tell me she's not working for you. She's so young. And he turned around and cold cocked her. He punched her. Knocked her out. Out like light. And um, he says, well, now's as, good a time as, now's as good a time as any. And I'm like, he's kind of looking at him. And he's like, bitch, I own you. He tried to explain it to me about, I'm a pimp and this is what I do, um, and now you're mine. And I got the crap beat out of me, and I was there for the next seven months. In the beginning, they were kind of tough. She would, you know, wake up in the middle of the night swinging, and sometimes I'd get an elbow to the chest or something like that. How many men did he make you have sex with? <sighs> I can't count. tried to explain it to me about, I'm a pimp and this is what I do, um, and now you're mine. And there was just no emotion in his voice at all. There was nothing there. It was like talking to a wall. And um, I started off with, you know what, this isn't for me. I'm not like that. I don't do that. I have, you know, I have options. I was going to go into the military. I wanted to be a corpsman. Um, and um, he got angry, and I got the crap beat out of me, and I was stuck. And I was there for the next seven months. And so basically, he kidnapped you. Mm -hmm. um, I was an hour away from my family and my friends. Um, after that, I had no access to cell phones or a computer. Um, I was stuck. How often did he physically assault you? In the seven months I was there, there was one time that I went four days without getting beat. How many men did he make you have sex with? <sighs> I can't count. So in seven I'm months... I'm 19, and I can't say how many men I've slept with. Um, yeah. In the seven months, did you ever try to escape? I tried to leave, but I had nowhere to go. Um, I had no money. He took every cent. Every cent. I tried hiding money, and um, I got beat to the point that I never thought about doing it again. How, how did you finally get away from him? He started to trust me, and he finally put me um, 10 minutes from where I grew up, my hometown. He was mad at another girl, um, and he hit me. He busted my nose and my lip, and he left. Um, but he left a cell phone on the bed, and I immediately called a friend of, um, a friend of mine's mother, and she picked me up from a hotel um, at 3 o'clock in the morning, dripping blood. They kept me with them, and we moved three times. Me and their whole family, they to, moved three times. To get away, to get away from him, yes, to find he, out where... Yes, he was looking for me and sending people to find me. And um, why didn't you call the police? I did, two weeks later. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. And then the police did what? They took the report, um, and I had an amazing detective who um, actually has been doing this for quite some time. Um, but they, 
this is someone that they really wanted. Um, this man's been a pimp since he was 16 years old, and he was 40 when it happened to me. And um, So the police were well aware of this they guy? They were aware of him, but no girl had ever um, spoken up before. Did you testify against him? I did. And with your testimony, a uh, federal jury convicted this man on one count of sex trafficking of children by force, fraud and uh, coercion, one count of being a felon in possession of a firearm, and uh, this just happened a few months ago. Mm -hmm. He has been sentenced to 30 years in a federal prison. <laughs> And in, in, in my book, uh, the word hero gets thrown around a lot. It really does. But in this case, because of what you did, uh, you were really preventing this man from doing this to anybody else, and you truly are a hero. Um, <laughs> is life better for you now? Life is very much better for me now. Um, I'm engaged. You're engaged. To a, to a wonderful man who uh, held my hand and sat through that entire trial, which I can't imagine um, having to do as a man, to hear all of that evidence and see all of that just so blunt. To hear th what happened to the woman he loves. Yeah. Um, and what are your plans for the future now? I want to be a social worker. And, and, and you now, you have a little baby. I do. I have a two-month-old son. Who has my little one? <laughs> That's my baby. Let's uh, <laughs> let's let's bring out your fiance. Let's bring him out. I love you so much. In the beginning, they were kind of tough. She would, you know, wake up in the middle of the night swinging and sometimes I'd get an elbow to the chest or something like that. People in my school do call me a bully. I call her a whore. Skanks. Go kill yourself just for the hell of it. In the beginning, they were kind of tough. She would, you know, wake up in the middle of the night swinging and sometimes I'd get an elbow to the chest or something like that. What is your relationship like with Mariah? Uh, my relationship is uh, very good. We have a really good relationship. Um, in the beginning, they were kind of tough. Um, when, uh, when she first got away, like, and I finally brought her to me and you know, got her completely away from the situation. Um, nights, she would you know, wake up in the middle of the night swinging, and sometimes I'd get, you know, accidentally an elbow to the chest or something like that. And you understood and why understood, what, what yeah, was happening. Yeah, I completely understood what was going on. Um, and it was just, it was hard for me to, you know, not really be able to do anything about it. Like, the only thing I could do is when she wakes up, you know, and I wake up, you know, just hold her and say everything's okay, you know. I'm here, you know, it's, it's all going to be all right. <laughs> um, You wanted to ask Mariah something, right? Yes. Um, when, I, when we got together and I uh, proposed for the first time, I gave her a ring. And that ring was lost. And I haven't been able to afford another ring to get her. Um, but with your help, Steve. Oh, no. Oh, my God. I was able to get her another ring.
Um, there is one other person that uh, gave you a lot of support, yes. right? Let's bring out that person. Yes. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming out. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Over again. I know. <laughs> uh, Mariah, why, Caroline, thanks for coming. Uh, Mariah, why don't you tell us about uh, Caroline? This is Caroline. This is my mom. She's not, she's not actually my mom, but she's my mom, and she's been my mom for quite some time. When you hear what happened to her, uh, just seven months of hell, what do you think? What do you feel? How do you feel? You feel stunned, you feel shocked, you feel furious, you feel horrified, you feel grieved and sad. You've done so much for this young woman, and it's not your daughter. And I, I always, and this is for you. Um, I just always have so much respect for people that take in children that don't have somebody in their life, that there is nobody looking out. And we, we always, we, we're so fortunate to have people like you that come on our show that are so selfless and uh, so giving and, and taking care of a, a child that's not their own, but stepping in and making that child their own. So I just want to thank you so much for that. I wish you all the best of luck. And I'm certainly sure that you will be a regular on my show if you're willing, and come honored. back and talk to young girls from time so to time. Honored. So would we would so love honored. to have you back. Definitely. People in my school do call me a bully. I call her a whore. Skanks. Go kill yourself just for the hell of it. I just feel like worthless. I feel like I'm not as pretty as other girls are. Every day I would bully her. I just want to put an end to bullying. I want to just stop it. People in my school do call me a bully. I call her a whore. Skanks. Go kill yourself just for the hell of it. Bullying has become an epidemic in our country. And tragically, in Connecticut this past year, 10 teenagers have committed suicide due to these actions. Today, we will meet the family of a young girl who killed herself this past October as a direct result of bullying. But first, we will talk to two girls from her high school. Take a look. People in my school do call me a bully and look at me like a bully. Over the last couple of years, I've called people whores. I've called people sluts, um, skanks. One time, I saw this foreign language kid, and I pushed him against a locker, and my boys held him. I called him fat, everything, and one of my boys opened up a locker and I shoved him in and we closed it. I saw Audria at the beginning of the school year. When I saw her every day, I would bully her. I basically called her short, go kill yourself, this, any, any type of words to hurt her. I would walk past her and give her a little nudge on the shoulder and basically call her a whore just for the hell of it. Just to make myself feel good, just to get a laugh at her. It is hard for me to stop. Audrea, you were bullied by Trina. Why did you call my show? I just want to put an end to bullying. I want to just stop it. Like, it's something that goes on in an everyday life. Like, every, like, most teenagers go through it, and it's just, it's wrong because so many people are affected by it. They go home to it, and I was bullied a lot, and it just really hurts. How did uh, Trina bully you? Well, she would, like, call me a whore. She'd call me a slut and a bitch, and, like, make fun of me, um, rumors like were spreading like, I don't know if she started them, but I know that they were spread and people told me, oh, Trina told me and. Is there any reason why she singled, you know, singled you out? I'm not sure. I don't know if it's just me, but I've noticed sometimes she bullies other people. Like, I don't think she realizes it, like how much she does it, but like after her and I kind of made up, we're acquaintances now and she like, 
I'll see, like, we'll walk in the hallway, and she'll just be like, see that girl, she's such a whore, and, like, I don't know, she just doesn't realize it, and sometimes I'll hear her, and they'll just, like, get really an upset face on, and just, it hurts me when I see it happen. When you were being called these names, when she was doing these things to you, um, how did you react to it? What did you feel? I just walk away and laugh as if I didn't care, but when I got home, I just kind of, like, it's like I fell apart. I just feel, like, worthless. I feel like... I'm not good enough, like, I'm not as pretty as other girls are, like. You, you were being bullied. It made you feel bad. How did you get through that? It was hard, like, the beginning of school last year, well, in the summertime, my friend was being bullied by girls, and that's what I do. I never let people get away with it. I always stick up for them. Like, I, I say, no, that's not right. And I stuck up for my friend on Facebook. I messaged these girls, and I said, hey, can you just cut this? Just stop. Like, you're hurting her outside of school. It's summertime. It's supposed to be fun. And you're, like, making her cry. You're making her feel worthless, and it's not cool. And so at the beginning of freshman year, when it's all nerves and I'm scared, they trapped me in the basement where my locker was, and they all cornered me and said, you better not message us. You better not mess with our girls. We will And they, like, just swore at me, and they just... And they, Which like, said to be terrifying. And they, like, um, one girl went in my face as if she was going to do something, and then just laughed in my face, and they all walked away. And it's just scary, like... So you said now with this Trina who was on the tape who bullied you... What's your relationship with her now? Now we're like, kind of like we're like acquaintances. Like if I see her in the hall, I'll be like, hey, or you know, I'll just. Then she doesn't bully you anymore. Not anymore. Did you did you confront her? I I did. I said like, listen, I don't know why you're doing this. Like I don't know why you're like, you think you want to bully me, but I'm not just nobody. Like I mean. I have feelings, and I think we should, like, just talk. And we just kind of, like, talked about it, and she's like, like, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't mean to really hurt you that bad. And we just, so we talked and kind of, like, just became acquaintances. Um, two students who went to your school killed themselves. Uh, how did that affect you? Well, like, I didn't know them personally, but just knowing the fact that someone could take their own life because of words that someone else said to them, it's just, like, put a hole in my heart, like, knowing that anyone can just feel that pain, just feeling like the better choice is, like, killing themselves, like, their whole life's ahead of them. They could have been a doctor. They could have done so many things in their life rather than just kill themselves. And the pain really is just beginning for everybody else, who, who the parents, the friends, the loved ones, brothers and sisters who think, what could I have done to stop this and, and really have to live with this for the rest of their lives. So I always... Young people watching the show, if you're in that position, reach out to a family, friend, somebody, and let's get you help. Um, <laughs> what do you hope and happens today? I want to just, like, open people's eyes and make them realize how, like, throwing a word out there can really hurt someone more than you think. It can really, like, lead someone into thinking suicide is the answer or thinking that, you know, I'm not good enough. Why do I live? Because everyone has a purpose in life. Um, um, I'm going to ask you to leave the stage. I'm going to talk to Trina, and then we'll bring you back okay. out. All right? It's sad to see where these teenagers, high school students, killing themselves because they're bullied. This past year, 10 teenagers have committed suicide due to these actions. The family of one of those teens joins us today. It's sad to see where these teenagers, high school students, are killing themselves because they're bullied. You're here today because uh, Audrea says that you, you bullied her in high school? Yes. And it's sad to see where these Teenagers, high school students killing themselves because they're bullied. I mean, think about that. Kids are killing themselves because they're bullied. And um, here's something that you fell into, bullying another young girl, maybe some other kids. Why would you do something like that? Well, it's just I wanted to bring revenge for um, my childhood, basically. Um, I was bullied ever since four years old. You were bullied? Yes. And basically I wanted to just get revenge. Do you think it's okay? 
Um, no, I don't think it's okay, but it's... And, and I, I don't want you to put you in a, in a totally uncomfortable spot because obviously you came to some peace with Audrea and you realized you made some mistake. Why Audrea? Why did you pick her out? Um, she was a freshman and she was fresh meat and basically I wanted to see how far I would get with her. Um, at one point you said to her, why don't you kill yourself? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, just I was in a blackout mode. Just I was blacked out and I didn't know what I was saying. Well, you weren't blacked out. I never buy that excuse. Uh, I seriously believe you say things without thinking. I've done that. I mean, I've never told anybody to kill themselves, but you, we all say things that regret at some point in our life. Um, and here's my thing. What if this young girl went and did that? Like because of the pressure of being bullied, your friend's picking on her, she's the freshman, and it happens. That's the scary thing. Like you could say something like that, and these kids go home and they think, yeah, this, you know, that's, that's a good idea. I'm going to do that. Could, how would you, you'd have to live with that for the rest of your life, you know what I'm saying? So I have to ask you, why are you here today? Um, basically, I'm here because I want to change. I want to change my life. I want to change a lot of stuff about my life. And truthfully, just as it is brave for Audrey to be here, it's certainly brave for you to be here being the bully it's brave for you to come here and sit here and talk about it and what you did. Um, as, as you know, there's been a couple of suicides in your school. A couple teenagers took their lives. Did that impact you at all? Or? Um, yeah, it did very. Like, it mostly impacted me very hard. And it basically put a deep, deep hole to the point where I was pouring out sorrow out of my heart. Um, Audrey is here. Uh, let's bring her out. What, what do you want to say to Trina? I know you don't realize what you do, but it did hurt when you call me those names or when you tell me that stuff. And it's just, sometimes it just, I did go home feeling worthless. I'd feel like I'm not good enough. I'd feel like, what's the point if like, people are telling me this, they don't just say it for no reason. Like, that's what I thought. But I know that you didn't really mean it. And I know that you just, like, you were bullied. And I know it must have been hard. And I just, and I know you can change. I know you can, like, you can stand up and say, I'm just going to stop this. And you can, it, it'll it take work. But I know you can do it because I know you're not just some girl. You're a really amazing person. And, like, I've seen you just... I, I just think you can really, like, change. Um, do you have anything you want to say to her? Um, Adria, I am very sorry. I'm very sorry for what I did to you. I didn't know how you felt. And I'm very sorry. Thank you. This past year, 10 teenagers have committed suicide due to these actions. The family of one of those teens joins us today. Not ever in a million years ever would I thought it would come to this, ever. Audrea mentioned two teens from her own school who committed suicide as a result of bullying. Take a look at this clip. Tonight, Enfield parents who say their own children have been bullied at school are reacting to the recent suicides of two local teens. The male and female 17-year-olds with connections to Fermi High School took their own lives within 30 days of one another. The family of one of those teens joins us today. Please welcome Jackie and Jacqueline. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Um, this is the first time you're publicly speaking about what happened to your child. Um, first of all, thank you for being here. It's, I'm sure it's incredibly hard. Uh, did you know your daughter was being bullied? I knew something about it, yeah. There was just one person 
Uh, she would be able to tell you more about what happened. It was typical, just a Friday night. I was on my way to go out, and for some reason, I kind of just had a feeling maybe I should go back in my room. I went back in my room, didn't see her on her bed, and looked in my closet, just seen her there on her knees and the scarves around her neck. I didn't think at first, I kind of thought it was a joke. So I just locked my, I locked myself in my room, just kind of sat there and just, you know, calling her name, everything, and no answer. So I kind of just went up to her and that's when I seen her blue in her face. And everything I learned from high school about CPR, everything just came back to me. And I kind of right then knew like it's now or never and I just went and did CPR. And she was just coughing, throwing up. I turned her on her side and that's kind of when I just panicked, opened my door and started screaming and my parents and everything came running in the room. At that time, she was already on the floor and I took the scarves, everything off from around her neck and I just dialed 911. They took her to the emergency room and kind of was downhill after that. Did you have any idea that your sister was being bullied? It was never in my face but it was more of she would come home and tell me, you know, this and that. Did she ever confide in you, like, I can't take this anymore? Never. She never made any never. statements to you? Not ever in a million years, ever would I thought it would come to this, ever. Just, she was the most caring, loving, spunky person, always just loved everyone of every clique, of every group. She was always just right there being friends with everyone. What would you say to any young person out there now who might be watching, who might be going through some of the things that your sister went through, that are contemplating anything crazy? What would you say if they were watching right now? I would just say that suicide is definitely, definitely, definitely not the answer to a problem that can be solved, whether it's talking to someone. It's just sad knowing that someone can't live to have kids, someone can't live to grow up and be married and to do everything that they wanted to do. What would you say to somebody who is a bully? I would just say that you should definitely, definitely think and rethink things before you say it. No matter, it could be the littlest name calling, no matter what, just rethink anything before it comes out your mouth because you don't know what that person is going through. You don't know how they feel. You don't know what their home life is like. You don't know anything. And I think it's really, kids have to stand, when they see bullying, they have to stand up with the person who's being bullied and, and speak up about it. and. And, and be courageous and say, hey, we're not going to tolerate this. You can't do that. Um. Well, you said there was no warning signs. Would you have anything to say to a parent out there? Just talk to your kids. Talk as... I spoke to my daughter every day. She was with me more times than any of my other children. And I still didn't know. And if I could go back and change time, I would do it in a heartbeat. But I can't. So if we can help some other kids, I hope we can. Because all our friends, I tell them, call me. Just come and visit if you want to. Because sometimes kids need to talk to other people apart from their family. And I just hope that they do talk to someone because a lot of kids are hurting now because of this. If anybody uh, would like to make a comment, uh, you can walk to the microphones if anybody has anything to say at all. Hi, um, we actually went to Enfield High School. My brother was really good friends with Megan. Um, we 
were affected, I think Hannah more than anyone, by suicides. And uh, we started a Facebook page <clears throat> back in December. Um, it was called Free Hugs for Suicide Prevention, and it was literally just me and Hannah trying to get together to spread a little positivity and show people that there was a network of people out there, even if you didn't know them, you didn't know who they were, there were people out there who cared and who want to see you succeed and don't want to see you in pain. We've been through that. We, we've been through high school. We know how it was, and we went to school with these kids who were doing the same thing. We lost peers. We lost classmates, our friends. I lost my mother to suicide, and it broke our heart to hear Megan's story and the other kids, and we wanted to do something about it and just to spread the message that we're here even if we don't know you. And, and a lot of the, the kids that showed up to our event, we didn't know personally. It meant a lot. Well, <clears throat> Um, and that's what exactly what I was talking about. Uh, two young ladies that got involved in trying to do something to prevent it, and we all need to do something like that and to prevent any, any child from doing this. So I applaud you guys. Um, I want to say that uh, in high school, I was a victim of being bullied. Monday, somebody decided after lunch to set my hair on fire. When I went home, I wanted to die. I didn't want to stay at that school anymore, but for some reason, I did. So to anybody out there that's being bullied, talk to somebody, find some help to get rid of whatever is going on in your life because it could take everything from you. But also, instead of taking your life, let it build you to be a stronger person because I could have went home and killed myself that day. I was embarrassed in front of the whole school. I didn't want to go back to school after that. And I stood there at that same school. I graduated from that school, and I'm here. So I let it make me become a better person. First of all, I want to thank everybody that participated in the show today. Um, it's a tragedy that we'd all like to put an end to it. It's senseless, senseless. The people that spoke, uh, very courageous, sharing their stories, uh, both ends, and it's it's great to see, to learn from our own mistakes. Nobody's perfect; we all make mistakes, but to know that you're doing something wrong and take corrective action like that. Um, we do this show, and I hope people at home who are in this predicament find some strength, uh, learn from it, go talk to a parent, teacher, friend, anybody. Uh, call me, and let's put a stop to this. But I also want to speak to every young person out there. A um, lot of brave people in this world uh, you learn in school, but you easily could become that brave person, that courageous person, and stand up to the bully. Don't let somebody go through this. And I would just ask everybody, if you see it, get involved, put a stop to it. Thank you very much. When we had to confront each other, I was just, my mind was full of so many emotions, just like mixed all together. I didn't know whether to be upset or happy or mad. Now that she expressed how she felt, it's like, I'm not gonna bully her no more. I'm not gonna bully anyone no more. I've actually basically changed my mind about bullying. I'm just straight up being a nice person. I give her all my respect for like being brave and coming on the show and admitting what she did and taking a step forward and saying how she's going to really change and how she's going to try to earn everyone's respect. I think, you know, we could be like, maybe we could both become like really close friends and like get, like whenever we see someone else being bullied, we could just talk to them and help them out.